Okay, um, so are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Uh, at least one, maybe two. Okay, I have something too. Okay, go for it. So the, mine is, um, we may do at least part of this under executive session, but I think we should have an action item to authorize the board chair to issue an offer, a revised offer of employment letter to Justin Mason based on our interlocal contract that we signed off on several meetings ago. So Justin Mason contract, got it? Um, and then and I'm, I'm putting that under executive session. You're putting it under? Yeah, okay. that's appropriate. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, I have a, um, I, don't, I don't know what the best way to deal with this is, but I have brought this up m many, many times in the past. Tom isn't aware of it because he hasn't been here. Yeah. But I would really like to see on the town administrator's report an old business or unfinished business or something where we can keep track of all the items that we talk about doing something about but never get around to um, so that we don't lose track of them. As an appendix. It, I don't care what it is. If it's on his report somewhere, old business or unfinished business or however we want to classify it, I think, I think we need to have some method of... Ongoing business and we'll have it as appendix. I just don't want it to get in the way of everything else. Okay. Uh, I have a whole list of things that I can, sh I don't have to do that in, in open meeting, but I can share that with yeah, Tom. Yeah, we and have a lot of them too, but yeah, please do. We'll okay. just make sure they're on the spreadsheet, and we okay. have to actually open the spreadsheet up. The only other question I have, um, which we don't have to deal with tonight, but we talked with Eric earlier about the permit issue for the form-based code. <clears throat> Clearly, um, since the inception of the form-based code to up to Eric's permit, there was no actual application form and no fee established. God only no fee established. So we God now have knows. fees established because we covered that in a board meeting not too long ago. We did. So um, my comment. But we need the form. We need the form, and my That's comment is that I think we should probably issue an amnesty for anyone who might have been subject to a permit up until, from the adoption time up until the time that we've actually adopted a fee and a permit. Okay, adding that to, wait, we don't want to, I don't want to discuss it right now. Adding that to ongoing business. Got it. For yep. future discussion. Yep. Perfect. The test of Tom. <laughs> okay, other agenda items. Um, the health officer appointments are due November 1st. So just want to add that as a new number 15. That is um, approving the, that's the state form? Yeah, for it's the state form and deadline. And then... Uh, oh yeah, that's the potential action coming out of that. So the, there is a potential action coming out of the executive session. I just want to add a note to that. Yes. Okay. Would um, the question would we would we do that? Are you thinking we would do that health officer appointment in executive session and have it as an action after we come out, or just? I don't think we need to do executive session. We haven't done an executive session in the past. <coughs> Unless you would like to for some reason. I can't think of a reason, but. Okay. Uh, the Make only. Sure. What? Keep going. The only other thing is that also under appointments, um, I got a call from Paul Warden that the Johnson Planning Commission nominated Tom Gallinat, uh, extra N in there, for form based code admin officer. So I'm just going to add that to the appointments list also. As, a, as an action item for tonight? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, reviewing invoices and orders. They're coming around. 
Yeah. One is a planned purchase for the highway department for a biking um, set chain and associated parts for $1,317. Okay. That's what was passed around, right? Yep. This was uh, just came in. Yeah, I know it. Okay. I saw it. I think I saw it. Okay. And then the next is in review of preparing the packet. Um, we probably should have an executive session for real estate negotiations, and that's for um, in regards to Holmes Meadow. Yeah. So when you have Holmes Meadow on the there's just details involved in um, the next separate, step. Yeah, yeah that should so be. item twenty one should be an executive session. I think we can do so part of it in open session, but then part of it should be an executive. And so um, it, it maybe come out, of, but I, I wanted you guys to make that call. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other agenda changes? No? Okay. Um, approving minutes for September 25th and October 2nd. So moved. Second. Discussion? Be awful lonely if you didn't. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Select board issues and concerns. I don't have any. Uh, I have one. Go ahead. Um, and this is kind of kind of under that old business follow-up. I just wonder if there's anything to report on this is just the um, senior meeting plans. Uh, and anything to report on VLCT inspection of properties. So they're both for Tom. I guess they would probably be both Tom. Um, the, do you know the library has reached out and um, offered the space at the Mason's Lodge? And then, I don't know, I have not followed through, but I need to reach out to the, I believe it's called the Church of the Madeline in Route 15 to um, see if they had some space that was available. But other than Gene's response, I have not heard uh, back from anyone else. Um, in regards to the inspection on uh, from VLCT and our insurance, um, the building was determined outside of the floodplain and they accepted the initial estimate for damage. $90,000, I think it's, um, I just got this the new, municipal, new municipal building. So they, they they agreed to accept that. We have a to-do list, though. We have to go through and do uh, full scope of work and make sure um, what the initial estimate to get the process started and the actual damage match. And then we have to do a contents list. We never put together what the contents were. There's a list started, and so I was going to start going one employee at a time just going down to their area and say, what'd you lose? And pull together a list and... And the partial list started. Yes, and Crockett started a list. Uh, she gave me that today. And we were kind of talked about, should we do one at a time or should we do a distribution? Um, and then we have to go through and um, lastly, go through what's called the out in the open stuff. There's a backup generator, the EV charger for the electric car. Those are two things that are yet to be determined um, if they're damaged and whether or not uh, the cost of replacement is. So, so the 90000 so doesn't include those? It's just building, it's not content, and it's not outside. Yep. Is that supposed to include the circle bill? Yes. Is that the yes. $60,000? That, I don't know. This was, I think, the cost of replacement has been accepted. The cost of to repair the building. Um, so it just started. We did, I just got off the phone this afternoon and they sent me over um, that spreadsheet. Ron and I looked at it. We have a, to make a to-do list together. 
Um, and that's, I should, I'll forward that over to you guys to see where it's at. The library is going to be much slower because it's within the floodplain. And, uh, the Recording in progress. Small amount of pool for the entire state. And that library has to be considered with all the other buildings within the floodplain throughout the state. Um, that process is going, but it's going to take longer on that one. Um, that t their determination is going to take longer. So we'll see um, what the timeline is. That's might, it's not going to slow down our reconstruction, but it is going to might slow down our payback and our reimbursement. Well, it's positive if you've heard back from the adjuster, at least. Yeah, I called today and she picked up and blew my mind. <coughs> yeah. yeah, almost miraculous. Okay, um, other issues and concerns. Okay, I do have one other. So I have been asked about the Powerhouse Bridge lighting and why there's not lighting in or uh, around Powerhouse Bridge. Uh, long story short, because it is a long story, um, the village is looking into what would need to happen to read light around the bridge, um, and there will be more to come. That's all I got on that one. Okay. Didn't we used to pay for lights on the car? Yeah, there, so I asked Nat about paying for lights, and there was a town meeting. Yeah. Okay, there's two things. There's lights around it, and there was a town meeting back a few years back where the voters voted to reduce the budget, and they had to make a bunch of cuts, uh, and that and turning some lights off were part of those cuts. I think they just cut globally at a percentage, and part of that global cut was lights. And also, um, the was. The bridge was either shifting or the top collapsed at one point or something to that effect. And that impacted the interior lighting. And that the village is looking into what it would take to relight the interior of the bridge. So I don't know, something apparently, according to Nate Bingham from Brigham, um, it, something happened with the bridge itself. That caused the lighting to not the lighting to not work. Well, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was more than twenty years ago. Oh, I think that might be what they're referring to. But anyway, so I don't know. Uh, all I know is that they're looking into what it would take to relight. So I'll do let we, you know if they find light. Do we have to light the bridge? Or does it have to be? Don't know. I, well, let's just wait and see we'll, what we yeah, hear. Yeah, we'll find out what it takes. And we'll yeah, let's see what we hear from we'll from there. <clears throat> okay. Um, planned purchases. So laptop for the economic development specialist, followed by the bed chains. Laptop. Tom, do you want to speak to So initially, um, Miranda requested a Chromebook, which is considerably more affordable. Uh, but since we use Microsoft 365 as a product, it was not a good fit. Um, so this is the same laptop we've used with all the other employees. And uh, this includes the hardware to attach um, to the Ethernet, and then also the software. You have to speak loudly, so it's there. Oh, sorry. So it's the laptop that we've bought in, uh, for everyone else. It was flood, same, same match, with the hardware to attach to the Ethernet and the uh, software for Office Any questions? Uh, move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Um, bed chain is, and parts. Thirteen hundred seventeen dollars. Which which truck is the this? bed chain is for truck twenty technically. Uh, it's not. It's still in use. The one that's in it. 
last year, truck 19, we had a bed chain in stock on the shelf, and one night it decided to break because it gets worn to a certain point, and we had it there to put in. Truck 20 is a year older than truck 19, so I'd like to put one back on the shelf in case it goes down at night. And then the fittings are to replace the ones that I had in the shop. Uh, we put some new ones on the salt truck to get when we got it ready for winter. Are they, is that chain interchangeable? To all three tandems, okay. yeah. <clears throat> Move to approve. Second. Uh, discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Uh, next up, 10 cents on the grand list. Probably still no answer. Do you want to put it in this list? What? What'd you say? Probably still no answer in writing from the village. Did you get an answer from the village in writing? About the 10 cents in the grand list? Uh, well, about the approving, yeah, about the payments so that we can approve the 10 cents in the grand list. So maybe I didn't understand the question. Um, I thought this was in reference to. Um, it is. Yeah. And it so, is. the item, what is the question that I need to ask? I guess I'll... Might be too late if we it's, get to approve it by yeah, November it's, 1st. It's too late. Motion to approve. I can, we can touch base this week. Yeah. So I, I, I think we still ask for it. We just want to get in writing the discussion that we had on the agreement to proceed to basically like we put in writing what we, what we talked about and agreed to. Which we asked for and they agreed to do. Yeah. Which they haven't done. But. I mean technically it's all an open meeting. But okay so 10 since the grand list. I already motioned to approve. Oh you motioned? Oh yeah. did you second? I have. You have not? You have not. Do you want to? Uh I'll second. <laughs> Make it easier on you. Okay, thank I'll you. I'll second. Any discussion? we got to be unanimous mm -hmm. on the vote, though. It's true. <clears throat> we certainly do. Any recommended amendments? <clears throat> no, I, I, I guess I just want to recognize that this is kind of the opportunity to withhold any of that portion of the money for those culverts which have not been, which we haven't received an actual proposal, written proposal on. So by approving this, which I'm going to vote to do, we're essentially giving up our ability to. Well, we're trusting that they'll do what we agreed to in open session. Yes, a, yes diplomatically, but. Very <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I agree with you. And you. Thanks. Okay, we're ready to vote. All those in favor? Aye. You have to say so that they don't have to pick it up in a minute. So. Aye. Aye. Are you going to vote for your own motion? I okay. don't want to. I just have it. Good. <laughs> Okay, uh, public works. You know, Jason, do you mind if we jump to the FEMA buyout before your report? No. Do, do you mind? No. He's got you items. Hold it against me? He's got items all the way to the end of the meetings. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, no let's, me. let's do push Jason down a little bit. We should have um, moved all those up. FEMA and state buyout program. Hi, Stephanie. Stephanie is, folks, everyone can't see you. Uh, Stephanie's waving. This is what Stephanie looks like for those who are wondering. Um, oh, the Johnson Select Board. So she, she's seeing you in that camera. Um, Stephanie, just so you know, our, we don't have a lot of audio options, unfortunately. So when you speak, it'll be a little bit of a production. <laughs> Apologies. And... Um, but we're going to let you speak in one second. So just a little bit of background. Stephanie and um, another person at the Vermont State Emergency Management, who is also a flood mitigation officer, and Carl and I spoke a few weeks back. Um, just looking at my notes. 
uh, about buyouts and the buyout process and um, Stephanie's just going to give a little bit of overview of what that means, allow us to ask questions, and I'm going to pull my notes out, look at them, and add in things that I find useful. Um, so, that being said, Tim, do you mind muting us? And Stephanie, as soon as we go on mute, um, I'm going to put you on audio. I'll give you a thumbs up. Let me just turn my video on. I'll give you a thumbs up when you're ready to speak. Oh, my, of course, it's not going to work. I'll use the reaction thumb up, thumbs up to let you know when you're ready to be heard. Um, okay, Tim. All right. Can you hear me? I can see you. So if you yeah. thumbs yeah. up in real life, that works too. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys. I'm, I'm very sorry I wasn't able to come in person tonight. I, I imagine that would have been easier um, on your end, but thank you guys for having me. So I'm, I'm happy to give a, just an overview of the, the buyout program. Um, we also, I manage funding for other things also, so if there's interest in things beyond buyouts, I can talk about that as well, but I'll start with the buyouts. Um, so following between Tropical Storm Irene and now, we've done about 170 property buyouts in the state. Um, and I apologize, my four-year-old just got home. If you can hear him in the background. Um, and so we've done about 170. Now following this July flooding event, um, we put out an intake form just to get interest from people to see who might want to do a buyout or who at least wanted a little bit more information. Um, because of the number of properties that flooded in Johnson, we got, I think, about 10 um, people that filled out that form saying we're interested in a buyout uh, and, and looking for a bit more information. Um, and that's out of, like, 220 across the state right now. So we have more interest now than, than we've actually done over the last um, 12 years since I read. Um, and so we've been reaching out to the towns where we had people that expressed interest. It's, it's really important up front to know that this program is voluntary for the property owner and it's also voluntary for the town. So it's important for you guys to be thinking about where, where it might make sense to do buyouts, where it might make sense to rebuild and what that looks like in your community. Um, and I'm happy to help you with that conversation. I, um, I saw, I see Tasha on too. I, I imagine the RPC is also happy to um, assist with that conversation too and helping you guys figure out what path makes sense. Um, but if you are interested in going forward with property buyouts, the, we've done a lot of them in the state, so we have a pretty good process put together for developing the applications. So we can do a lot of that work on our end up front. Um, but we have, there's a set of property owner forms that need to be filled out. Some of them need to also be signed by the town. Uh, and then we can put, help you put together the application and get signatures on it. Um, once the application is done, so for the most part, we'll be applying under FEMA's Hazard Mitigation Grant Program um, for buyouts that are eligible there. There are some specific caveats that make buyouts ineligible there, but we can usually do those then through our state program. So there's a backup. If you're not able to go through FEMA, we can do the other program. Um, but on the FEMA side, it's all of that application material comes together, and then we send it to FEMA for review. And it'll probably be six months before we get an actual award from FEMA. So once we get that award, um, I'll lay out two scenarios here for how the grant would actually be managed. Um, so traditionally, the town would be the one managing the funding. So as soon as we have the award, you would hire someone to do an appraisal. We would get the appraisal back. You would hire someone to do legal and closing work. Um, we would purchase the property with our funding, but then it ends up in town ownership. Um, the town would hire someone to demolish the structures. Uh, and then the town is required to maintain the site as green open space in perpetuity. So it remains in town ownership. You're required to make sure that it stays as open space. Um, so that's the, the very high level what the process looks like. Um, what we're hoping to do through this funding round is have BEM, my, my organization, Vermont Emergency Management, be the sub-applicant so that towns, if they're interested, 
we can take on the admin burden for you so that you don't have to manage the grant. We can hire someone to do all of the appraisals, hire someone to do all of the legal work, et cetera. Um, we have to talk to the legislature about that for some specific permissions before we can commit to that approach, but we're very hopeful that we'll be able to offer that to towns, uh, that if you're interested in having us manage the grant instead of you manage the grant, we can do that. Um, you would still end up owning the property at the end, so the site would still get transferred to the town at closing. There is a, so for the, on the FEMA side, there's a, it's 75% funding, but we have a state general fund allocation, so we'll be able to cover 100% of project costs for all buyouts, so from the appraisal all the way through to the demolition, seating and grading of the site um, is all covered under the grant. And for those that fall under our state program, there's no required match there, so either way, the, the project is covered in full, so there's no cost to the town, there's no cost to the property owner. I think I'll stop there and see if you guys have any questions. Okay. Um, are we unmuted? We are unmuted, yes. Uh, so part of the buyout, is there actual plans on uh, like future mitigation if a property is selected for some reason for buyout, whatever the process may be? Um, is the state and or FEMA above and beyond demolition going to take two feet or three feet of fill or anything like that out? Or is that kind of a case-by-case -case basis? I know it really only amounts to a teaspoon uh, in the long run, but a lot of teaspoons up the entire Lamoa Valley watershed area would have made a difference in our town. So basically you're asking about the flood mitigation yeah, use so like, of those properties what, as part of that demolition. Yeah. Is will it, it, will it cover the yeah, the lower cutting end. cutting the property yeah. down. Yeah. Okay, Tim ready? <clears throat> okay, thank you. That's a very good question. Um, so the standard buyout is seeding and grading of the site at the end. But we also have other state, we have our state funding program that we could use to, if you just wanted to put in riparian plantings, we could help you with that. Um, if, there, if there's a need to, if, there's, if we think that there's an ability to remove fill from the site that will help reduce flood risk, we could pay for a scoping project um, to, to get designs put in place to see what that looks like uh, and then potentially pay for that restoration work as well. So it, it, usually that would be FEMA funding and there would be a 25% match requirement. Um, but there's a lot of interest in flood reduction right now. We're hoping to be able to have additional funding available to, to go towards that match with communities that flooded. So hopefully there will be some ability for us to pay that match. But yes, it's, it's eligible to do scoping studies. It's eligible, um, you're eligible to apply for restoration work as well. And we absolutely would encourage that um, and we've done, we've done quite a few projects uh, working with Seth Jensen and LCPC uh, in your region to, to restore floodplain and do those, for, those like full, full scale projects. So yes, absolutely on the table. Okay, Tim. Thank you, um, that's helpful. Do you have questions, Duncan? Uh, she might have answered them. Um, Just for clarification, I believe I heard Stephanie say that there was the option to have the state manage the grant, whereby they would cover the costs of and hire the appraisers and the demolition, et cetera. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I wanted I wanted to just clarify that I I understood it to be the case. Um, and the other question I had was. When the uh, I, I've heard the term um, paying based on the day before the flood or the appraisal based on the day before the flood um, as being the purchase to, price. I was just about to read my note that I have from our previous conversation, which says that the buyout amount is the current market market appraisal rate. Um, and in addition, the covered cost closing legal and demo would be the total buyout costs that would be um, paid for 
between FEMA and the grant as part of that buyout. This is Stephanie, do you, I'm gonna put you back on. Tim, you good? Yeah, yeah so 100% of the costs are covered. Um, yes, and sorry, the first question was around, um, shoot, my brain just totally lost it. <laughs> oh, the current market value, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so we can do, it's possible under the program to either do current market value or the day before the storm value. So if the property flooded during this event, we can buy it at the day before the storm appraised value. The important thing to note there is that if they, if the property owner received any federal assistance like flood insurance or an individual assistance payment, um, FEMA sees that as a duplication of benefits. So what that means is if the appraisal comes back at $100,000 and the homeowner received $10,000 in individual assistance, the buyout by default would offer them $90,000. But if they have receipts showing that they use that $10,000 as intended to fix their structure, then they'll send us those receipts, we'll look through them, and we'll be able to pay them the full amount. So FEMA's just trying to make sure you don't pocket $30,000, buy yourself a new car, don't fix your house, and then get $30,000 again. But if you fix your house, you get the money back. The other question, oops, sorry. Back. Okay, the other question I have is, I wrote a note on this, but I don't remember what the answer was. Um, is there any restriction on location? Do they need to be within the flood map? If they flooded outside of the flood map, are there any considerate, like the 100-year flood map, or even the 500, there may be a property or two that could fall into something like that. Is there any restrictions when it comes to where they fall within that flood map? So very good question, thank you. So on, on the FEMA side, it's a lot easier to do a buyout if it's in the special flood hazard area. Um, but we have our state program, the Flood Resilient Communities Fund, which is intended to fill gaps in what we can't get through FEMA funding. Um, and that program allows us to do buyouts much more broadly. So if we can show that it has flood risk by either it flooded during the event or it got pretty close to flooding, um, or if it's in the ANR map river corridor uh, layer, for example, there's various ways you can show that, but the property doesn't necessarily have to be in the special flood hazard area or to have flooded in the past in order to participate. The, the caveat is that we don't have a lot of money left in our state program, but we are going back to the legislature and we'll hopefully have an additional, additional allocations in the future. So we have about $3 million left in that, in that pot right now. Um, the other question I have is, is there anything, like what are the next, what are the next steps? I know you kept, you referred a couple times to needing approval from legislature. So are you in a holding pattern right now? Or are, do you have next steps identified? Yeah, so I can, I can take a look. So I think we sent you the list of properties. So you've, um, I'm not sure the whole select board has seen that, but I think the, at the town you've seen that. Um, and so the next step is if the, if the town is willing to support buyouts, um, starting to let us know that, we can send you the forms, you can start to look at them, see if there's specific areas where you would wanna do buyouts or other areas where you might not. Um, and then we can start filling out paperwork. The, the thing we're waiting on for the legislature is whether we'll be able to be the ones to manage the grant on your behalf. So if the town wanted to apply now and manage the grant yourself, you could do that. It's a, it's a, lot, it's a decent burden for small towns. Um, they often don't want to do that if they don't have to. Um, but we can still, it doesn't mean we have to be in a holding pattern. I think it's still, it's worth having that community conversation about where you think buyouts make sense, um, where you want to build, where you shouldn't build um, going forward. And I think especially trying to, through the lens of trying to identify what are those areas where maybe you could reduce, remove some fill and lower elevation and reduce risk more broadly um, and starting to have that conversation now. So the other piece that I'll tell you about is that we applied for scoping funding um, under this next funding round. That's gonna be a statewide application. That's gonna cover 
multiple different communities to do flood assessments. So looking at looking up and downstream, trying to figure out if there are specific opportunities, um, what best opportunities you have to reduce risk broadly across a larger area within your community. So Johnson was very high on the list of priority towns for that project. Um, and we're hoping to have an award from FEMA at the end of this month. So I'm hoping to have a little more to tell you about that going forward. Um, and I've been talking to staff at LCPC as well about other potential scoping project opportunities. So we can start moving forward with scoping, but I think it would be helpful for you guys to, to look at where people are interested in doing buyouts and figure out if that's something that, that you would support as a part of this larger vision to reduce risk. Tim. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, got it on the just needing to understand our interests. So I think we should talk about that for a minute. And on the scoping study, just one comment back to Evan, what Evan said earlier is if you're looking at Johnson as a area for that scoping study, a large amount of the water that we're talking about that came into Johnson came upstream from Johnson. So, you know, Johnson mitigation is upstream and here within town too, uh, where the rivers meet in town, but also uh, where the rivers meet upstream, upstream too. Um, any other questions for Stephanie? Yeah. Go ahead. So I, <coughs> we're, we're going to be looking at um, requests for tax abatements for properties that were flooded. Um, is there a possibility that these properties would be closed upon within the current tax year, which would end June 30 in our case? Um, I guess I, I'm, we're struggling with how to deal with the request for tax abatements A. But secondly, we're trying to figure out whether or not someone applying for a buyout, whether, whether they're going to be able to come in and request an abatement for the next tax year. <coughs> Any thoughts on that? So it sounded like June is the timing for you guys. Yeah, I think the... The likelihood of having a buyout completed between now and June is probably fairly low, um, especially if it's going to FEMA. We have to put the applications together. If you're going to wait to know whether the state can apply on your behalf, that's going to take a little bit of time, too. So I don't think anything would be purchased and, and done before June of next year. Um, the other note I want to make um, that I hadn't mentioned already was that the, for properties that are substantially damaged, um, it's easier to do FEMA buyouts. Um, if that if that is the case, if they meet that substantial damage definition within your local flood insurance regulations, um, then that's another way to, to do buyouts. Um, it's also those if they don't do buyouts, those properties will be required to meet the NFIP regulations. And one of the other things we can fund is elevations. Elevations are tricky, um, but if there is interest and if there's an area where that might make sense, we can talk more about what that looks like too. That one we don't have match for, so the homeowner would likely have to contribute 25% match. But elevations are possible as well. Tom? I just want to piggyback onto Duncan's question. Um, if there's delinquent taxes for an approved buyout, but the closing is scheduled as a plan. There's the processing to get it to be approved. Do the delinquent taxes, are they, is that, does that lien continue through the buyout program so the town would be, would receive those delinquent taxes at the closing, even though they also are the purchaser of the land? Sorry, were you feeling it? No, my kid's walking by. Sorry, he's going to bed. <laughs> so the the closings in this case looks it looks a lot like a any regular closing. So anytime someone's buying a house from someone else, um, and the paperwork in that is 
that any outstanding expenses get paid off first. So the mortgage, any taxes that are outstanding gets paid off first, and then whoever we're purchasing the property from would get any remaining funding. So it's the same, that process is handled the same way that any other closing would be. And in, and in all cases, the town needs to sign off on a buyout, meaning a property owner could not go through a buyout without the town. Okay, um, so any other questions from the board? Not tonight. Okay. Um, I think like for our next steps for us, it feels like we probably should maybe ask Tom and Scott to help us with <coughs> areas that we should consider buyouts. It sounds like area based is probably a way to think about it, at least segmenting by area. Is that what you, the board would like to see? Like, what do you what do you want to do for next steps in terms of how we would consider buyouts or not? I. Speaking personally, I would have to know where the requests are coming from. I, I think okay, Scott good. has some great input on this. I do think everybody that lives in this town knows the area that flooded, right? So there's like three or four <clears throat> major zones. It's a pretty easy way to split it up. But we, without knowing where the requests are coming from, maybe zone X we consider for buyout because of potential I'm not a river engineer, I don't know if it's a better potential or not. But maybe zone Y is the one where all the requests are coming from, so we just kind of shot them all on the foot. It's a delicate process because it's confidential yet. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, that's a question for Stephanie. So Stephanie, we can't talk about these properties in public meeting if the list is confidential. If the list is not confidential, we can talk about it in open meeting. And at this point, my understanding is that the list is confidential. So how do we proceed in having open meeting discussion about this? We're going to executive. Oops. Executive. Hold on. That's, that's so yeah, I think someone was just starting to say you could go into executive session. I think the, the trick here is that we, we want to respect the people who filled out these forms. Um, we asked them to fill out a form if they were interested. We asked them if it was okay for us to share that address with their town. Um, but we, these are people who just wanted more information. They might not necessarily want to go ahead with the buyout. And so I think, it's, I think it is important to protect that within, within this body. But it's, and you have the list, so if you can go into executive session and look at it and pull up a map and start to talk about areas that make sense, I think that could be incredibly valuable. Yeah, we, unfortunately we can't have discuss, uh, an executive session discussion if there are not open meeting reasons to be an executive session. So uh, I think we probably need to ask someone who can figure this out. Yeah, it would be potential property acquisition. Maybe. It could, well, we're not really in a we're not really disadvantaged at this point, though. By talking about it. We're not negotiating real estate either. No. no we're not negotiating. I think you're probably right that there's not a valid and good reason to enter an executive session. I don't think session. we have an executive session reason. So, Stephanie, if, if you don't mind helping, like, I don't know who at BEM can help suss this out, but we do need an executive session reason to go in or approval from you to utilize that list if it means contacting the property owners to see if we can talk about it in open session. Like, I don't know what it means, but... Could we... Could we do this? LCPC, and this would be an ask for LCPC, but they've done a pretty detailed flood analysis of Johnson. Could we place, without identifying the properties, could we place the properties on that map that they've done, which would then give us a better idea of the priorities for flooding? Is that the map that you've been working off this, Scott? I'm working on the map that's on the clerk documents. It's on the what? Clerk it's on documents? clerk documents for the maps. Right, those aren't the LCPC ones that you're talking about. The thing about. is, the FEMA maps, like, we have, 
lots of properties that were not within the fun the hundred year. Yeah, they're, they're not 1980. You know, before electricity. So. Yeah. Would the scoping study be the next step to secure, and then that'll give you. Then we can get I don't think we need to do it. I think it's already been done. Yeah. Uh, LCPC has done done that flood evaluation, and if we could get. The bottom line is, for me, like it doesn't even matter because let's pick a zone that we know was hit hard. Okay, let's put, let's pick the lower half of the trailer park. We know it was hit hard. If there, oh, let's not pick the trailer park. It's more complicated for mobile homes. Let's pick River Road. Let's go pick River Road. <laughs> this um, is more complicated. West. That area, not all of the houses on River Road West are within that hundred-year floodplain. Most of them are, but not all of them. So what about the ones that weren't, that had their first floor? That's why I'm saying floor? that the LCPC study is it's not based on the, it's not based on the FEMA floodplain maps. It's based on flood modeling. And it shows the potential greatest impact areas in the village for flood impacts. Okay, so I, gotcha. I, th I think if we if we could just put a pin where each of the proposed without identifying the property owner per se, I see. we could probably get a really good perspective on, on top of that. Gotcha. Yeah. I have a question. Um, of these twelve to fifteen people that are interested, does she have a sense of how many people actually follow through? Well, the thing is, the question isn't about, are you filing for this? It's, do you want more information? Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't think that, I mean, I'll, I can let Stephanie speak for Yeah, myself, I just wondered, because that's really, a, they're, they're just asking for more information. 50% of them might say, forget it. Yeah, and then they're going to find out it's two years before they receive anything. They're going to have I mean, the other thing is I would that guess it would be a very low percentage of people actually follow all the way through and accept buyout money. You gotta figure there's only 250 of them in the last 12 years. That's the average of 20 years. I just years. feel like we're speculating Super that's long. not gonna help us get to where we need to be, honestly. But well, that's okay. Um, Good. Thanks. Um, I'll just jump in to say that it really depends on the town. And I think the people who have expressed interest are the people who found us. That's not necessarily everyone who might be interested either. So if there's specific areas that you're looking at and you do a couple of buyouts in one neighborhood and then the neighbors hear about it, you might get more interest in that area. So I think there's, it can go both ways. And the reason we're talking to you guys is because there's enough properties that might be interested. Um, but I don't think it would necessarily be limited to just this list. So if you guys can look at the specific areas and see where it makes sense to, to do restoration work and to remove homes, and then you could even reach out to property owners if you wanted to, um, to, to facilitate that. But I, I don't think, but you're right, they probably won't all go forward with it, but there might also be others that could actually be interested and don't know enough about it yet. And I also have a note here that says, I, I didn't put context around my notes, so it's not the best note in the world. <laughs> but it says a year from the declaration, which implies to me that the buyout, you can initiate a buyout from the emergency declaration plus one year. Is that true? Yes. So the, the deadline for us is, is always a year from the actual disaster declaration, which will be July 14th of 2024. Um, the, the reason that deadline is important is because it's a really, it's one really big funding round, but also because if you want, if community members want to do the day before the storm value, it has to be under that funding round. Um, so that's a caveat there. But right now the deadline will be July. We are, I'm anticipating that we will request additional time from FEMA. So we'll probably have more time than that if people decide they're interested later. Okay. So I hear the idea of using the maps from LCPC to overlay property addresses that we have on file. 
I still don't know if that gets us to where we need to be. Maybe we can have a follow up on like not the next agenda, but the following on what our criteria could be. And maybe we could start drafting what our criteria could be. I think Scott I think, would be helpful. And Scott, okay. yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I think we should get some criteria and guidelines for how we're in the same. Actually, maybe we can apply it to the abatement meetings too. <laughs> but for um, how we're going to address. That's not even funny. <laughs> well, it's real. How we're going to address handling um, our buyout approach. I understand what Stephanie's talking about with properties meeting the definition of substantial damage. Mm -hmm. Scott, based on what you've seen so far, do you think there are many properties that? That's 50% of the value, right? Right. You think there are many properties that meet that threshold? I haven't seen all the properties. Yeah. I haven't been invited to a lot of these properties. Yeah. For, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons behind that. But and cl clearly that wasn't the only. It, she just said it would make it easier for a buyout to occur if, it, if the property met the 50%. We have the substantial. file marshal information somewhere that we should dig out. It's the fire marshal, we already have that from the fire marshal. The number of condensed About the, if, yeah, the, the substantial damage list. But, you know, to me, as I think about this, if you've got a, if you've got a landowner that wants to do it, mm -hmm. that, that says a lot to me. Um, and we should probably do what we can within reason to support that. Um, and if it happens to be in an area that is, we know is going to flood the next time, then that makes sense too, to try and do that, you know, support that buyout. So I think, you know, the dangerous thing for people, like Stephanie mentioned it, if, if we've been told two times and you're out, right? So if you take money, um, two times and you don't, you don't follow through on it, mm -hmm. then you're ineligible for a buyout at any point in the future. And I'd hate to see property owners be put into that, you know, sure. position. So. Good point. Stephanie, did you want to add something? I'm not, I'm not sure what you're referring to by two times and you're out. I think we were told, and maybe I maybe I didn't understand this quite right, but I th I think we were told by FEMA officials that if you have taken money from FEMA twice and haven't done a buyout, then you're ineligible for any future buyout or any future money from FEMA. As a regular claim, regardless buyout or claim, it's a th your claim. Third yeah. To, if you've taken money yeah. from FEMA. Three times, I think it is, but yeah. Well, you can't take the it third. the third. The third time is the last. The third time. time is the last time, yeah. Including buyout. I only heard that from somebody from FEMA. They yeah. said it's so a new would, rule. Yeah. Yeah, I seem to remember that's what you guys said. Uh, yep, I've heard the same. Beth, um, I just wanted to add to the substantial damage, too, between, you know, single occupancy just for a family in apartment buildings. If they have multiple kitchens and multiple bathrooms, you're putting the cost right to the roof. And Brian, you know this too. Just if you have to replace two or three kitchens and that many bathrooms on the first floor of an apartment building, the cost is going through the ceiling compared to a single family home where a kitchen and a bathroom is going to be probably around 60 yeah, it's a rental, they're different ones anyway. Yeah, there are. Yeah. So yeah. without having eyes on the house and knowing what the house is being used for currently, figuring out substantial damage is a little basic. Yep, and um, actually that's probably a question for Stephanie too. Landlords is a little bit different because they don't fall into the individual assistance for FEMA. Um, does, does this uh, buyout program include landlords, Stephanie? Hold on one second, I'm not ready. Uh, Tim, can you mute? 
So I missed the first part of that because um, it was quiet and I couldn't quite tell, but I think the question is, can we do multifamily buyouts as well? Which is, yes, we can. Um, so we can do multifamily, we can do commercial structures also. Um, the, where substantial damage is important is mostly for those larger buildings because there's a cap on how much, how, what the total project cost is for a buyout with FEMA funding in order to not have to do a, what's called a benefit cost analysis, which is what shows FEMA is cost effective. So if it's substantial damage, it's considered cost effective. Um, so the, the value can be higher if it's a commercial structure or residential. Um, so, and through FEMA funding and through our state program, it, it's okay if it's, if it's rental, so it doesn't have to be a, someone's um, for only home. Um, the, the other thing that's available, so if there's a tenant living in the structure, it's a voluntary buyout for the property owner. It's not voluntary for the tenant, which makes them eligible for federal assistance. Um, so we have to follow some very specific rules to go through this incredibly detailed process to figure out exactly how much funding they would get, but they do get some funding um, as a tenant under the Uniform Relocation Act. Thank you. That's a lot of information. Anything else? <clears throat> Unfortunately, I think we're already crunched for time. Yeah, we need to keep moving. It'd be great to talk for another hour. But. Um, thank you, Stephanie. This is important stuff, so we really appreciate you joining us, and we will be in touch soon, I'm sure. Uh, okay, insurance compensation for damage to salt road to road salt. Sorry. Okay. So PLCT um, acknowledged an estimate of $19,000 worth of damage to the salt based on volume, and so the max is out of $5,000, and agreed to close that out with our insurance company to pay us $5,000 um, for that. Um, there, I just uh, on the way here, got an email from Ron, and this is the maximum payment amount for the lost product. But um, what this means, and I'm just going to read this directly, is from Ron Rutensky, the human consultant. Um, this Jason W. will have to manage the salt pile as he sees fit for winter. Caution if any slot slurry or leakage off site is occurring due to excess water in the stockpile, then preventative measures should be considered. A temporary burn may be the only option. Then mixing contaminated salt, sand, silt into a winter sand pile for spreading on roads. Um, Jason, you might want to speak to this part, but there's been a lot of talk of, is there a way, what do we do with the salt, right? It's filled with silt and sand, and it's at the bottom of the pile, and so you can either set it up off to the side, you can mix it in with the winter sand, or it can be trucked, trucked off as, as lost, and I think you had some ideas on that. Okay. Well, <clears throat> The stuff that's got some silt in front of it, we're just mixing it into the winter sand when we cap it for winter. The four foot level throughout the pile, that's going to be compromised a little bit from the water getting into it and then it kind of forming like a block. We're going to ramp up onto it for the winter and use the top half. And then our goal is to see what it's going to look like in the spring if we can get it crushed up and. Uh, small enough chunks to run through the grizzly to cap the pile with it next year so that was going to be my question is, yeah. is it something that you think could be repurposed that's the plan the yeah this doesn't this keeps the claim open because you can't get it out without moving the however many thousands of yards on top of it so you really don't know your damage until you've used up your winter salt um, FEMA is going to be kept open to the spring and based on what Jason can't reuse reasonably and that extra time that he has to use to process and sort as part of the FEMA damage is just to truck it, just to move it around several times. Um, and then we'll seek to close that out in the springtime with FEMA for the, and for the remaining difference between the total damage and the $5,000. So say it's 20000 is the final price put on the total damage, we would receive 15000 from FEMA for 90% of uh, 
the fifteen thousand. So what about insurance compensation? Because you're talking about FEMA. Um, so that's five thousand here from VLCT, but um, this five thousand has no ramifications on FEMA's total payout at the end. But what this, the reason VLCT is paying five thousand dollars right now is because they can close it out because the damage is greater than five thousand, and that is our maximum reimbursement for materials. So the, um, this is going to put the first step of every FEMA claim is you have to the insurance company has to accept or deny. It and then FEMA picks up the difference. And so step one for the salt pile is uh, VLCT accepted it and is paying $5,000. Um, That's a, the 5000 payout is a policy on that. Correct. Yes. OK. Uh, and this will require uh, your signature. So Jason, your, your plan or your thought at this point is to stockpile the the proposed winter sand or the proposed winter salt on basically on top of what's a hard mass in there now? Or? No, there, the salt shed we filled up in the spring for the season. Uh, and there's some, well, there's usually leftover, so it was going to be in the next season, but being that it, we lost some with the compromised water that got in there, my plan is to, we're capping the pile, so we're using the stuff that's been compromise most with the silt right now. We'd have to use no matter if it was compromised or not to cap the pile as far as mixing it in. And then we're going to use as much as we can until the real cold weather comes because it's not going to really be a big factor until it gets down in the zero mark when it starts making that thing a cube. And that's when it'll be. We'll have to put a, a little dirt ramp to get up to the so the loader can get up the four foot mark and scoop off everything off the top and then we're going to deal with the bottom half in the spring before we put more new salt in. So you think you basically will be able to use it, with what's there? I have very good outlook on being able to use every. I think it'll, what I've seen, it, it's going to break up fine. It's just not going to be, I don't think it's going to break up to what we need it to be when it gets cold out. The lower section, that's why we're going to have to do it in stages. Yeah. Having been wet already, do you think it will have compromised the ability of the salt to do what it's supposed to do? Uh, it's still gonna, it's still salt. It's just the, the stuff that got wet, the four, it's four, four and a half feet that's just, uh, it's remaining wet. And it's gonna, it's, you know, it's already starting, it's activating. So it's sitting there wet. It's dried some, but we took some out. They put it in a freezer and it turned into a giant chunk. So, and we can't take it out to process it because every time you scoop into it, obviously something's falling down. So we don't want to take the whole pile out and try to save anything because it's going to compromise more of it. So. We'll okay. have so for this agenda item, anything, any concerns with any of that? No. And uh, can somebody <coughs> authorize me to sign this passive? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just have it. Okay. Um, female procurement for Let's let there's a lot of people here. Let's jump around a little bit. Apologies for jumping around a little bit, but uh, number 11 municipal building library winter preparedness. Sorry, municipal building and library winter preparedness. So, do we need to cover the procurement stuff before we go? Yeah, 10. I'm sorry, I'm like, do it. Like, very, do it. very linear. Okay. We skipped over Jason's highway stuff. I know. That's yeah, fine. <laughs> We like the this company. Um, we can jump to 12, which is the recent water leak. This will build a roof and siding inspection. I'm just like thinking, let's get to the library stuff, and then let's get down to the snowmobile stuff. Then we'll get to Jason's stuff, and then we can pick up where we left off. There's snowmobile so stuff. What do we need to talk about to get to the library? Do we need to talk about the FEMA procurement procedure? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Um, so uh, the library went out to bid, as we know. Um, we received two electrical bids, one general contracting bid. FEMA is, has some pretty strict procurement guidelines, and if we had received three quotes, we wouldn't be here today. Three quotes, they accept 
accept it as fair and open to the public. You follow, you can check that box, move on. Um, but because we didn't do it, and this is a problem throughout the state, uh, the problem for the question, um, you now have to show fair and open to the public bid process. Um, last week, we put out an RFQ, a request for qualified contractors. Uh, we received one phone call, uh, but no response. Thank you. So we're going to follow through with that. Um, and the next step and the suggestion is we put these back out to bid to show that we were truly fair and open to the public and we did our due diligence. The risk of not doing this is if you don't check the box for fair and open to the public under their procurement guidelines, is you fall into what's called RSV, which is a three to five year construction average, construction cost average. Uh, last Thursday, we had an inspection on the buildings, and we literally measured every inch of baseboard that was removed. So they're going to take every linear foot and do a three to five year average on the construction cost. When you take a 15-year depreciation, and you get it, before you sorry, who 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 measured it in FEMA? Okay, so they're going to come up with an estimate of so uh, part of so they have they have two two types of audits. One is when we go out to bid, our, what the contractor says needs to be done. They come out and review the building and say, oh, this is reasonable, because if that's how they show that you're not upgrading and you're replacing what was there. But they have to prove that to FEMA. FEMA has to prove it to FEMA. Then the whole process goes to a program called CRT, which is like a final audit of like the FEMA inspectors and the town's and the town's process for having the construction done. If we don't follow the procurement process, um, which we can't the do. The FEMA procurement process? The FEMA procurement process, not, not just ours, but we also have to check their box is then we fall into what's called RS means. And RS means is just CRT, the final audit says, hey look, we can't we can't say that you this was you followed the process because you didn't get enough quotes. Every time you don't check that box, you have to write a memo. And that memo saying, oh we went out to bid, we only got one contractor, we only got two electricians, might not be enough. The ramifications of not going out to bid again and trying our hardest to be fair and open to the public for the library is roughly twenty to twenty five thousand. So we might receive twenty to twenty five thousand less if we don't show that we follow up for FEMA's procurement process. If we had three quotes we wouldn't be talking about this. So it's really the lack of response which has, the town has no control over that's bringing this conversation up. So our FEMA consultant is recommending that we repost the RFP. Yep, right. and mm -hmm. like we are, that's why we did that RFQ yep. a week ago. Um, so, was we were trying our hardest. It's not a lot. It's not very expensive, and most importantly, it doesn't slow down construction costs because I believe the earliest they can get in there is December. Is that correct? So the idea is we're doing, we're checking all the boxes. No one's expecting more response because nobody's responding anywhere right now, and um, but it means that we can receive the full 90% that FEMA has can reimburse. Even if we still only get one response? Yes. After the so our memo will be went out to bid on X date, received X bids, put an RFQ out for more contractors, put, an R the sec put the RFQ out a second time. It's going above and beyond their process and above our procurement policy to show that we are fair and open to the public and we still only received one bid. Um, you have to justify, every time you don't come back, you have to justify why. And, you know, if you're talking about a $10,000 fix, it's probably not worth it. But when you're talking about a $100,000 fix, now we're talking the uh, about twenty to 25000 in this case, because of the rate of inflation over the last few years has been so high. Um, Is there any consideration by FEMA as they're looking at this, looking at this with regard to the historic nature of the building and the... Absolutely. Uh, that's a wild card right now. Um, so FEMA's audit that went through last Thursday, we, went, we spent several hours at the library. FEMA was very helpful by text, thank you. And uh, they, they brought a historic preservation person and they made their report. We have no idea what it says. 
Uh, they sent that off to the state, and the state's going to come back with a report back to us about what we can and cannot do in that library. Um, from my understanding, the plans that the library is planning to do is put it back to the way that it was when it was built, so I, I don't see a lot of hiccups, but we have no idea what that report is going to say at this time. But this RS means estimating piece would, include, would take that into account. The, yeah. How does it take it into account? Well, Re reconstructing this, a historic I think this is bookcase we, system. They would have, so we went through with pictures. We had one piece of uh, wainscoting, and the bookcases were kind of built over the wainscoting. We were able to show that, and so they calculated the total linear fit of wainscoting, total linear feet of bookcase. Um, and then they're going to, they have values and they put in to say what the cost is of that. For, for woods that's no longer available? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. You can find it, actually. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Okay. Preconditioning for a lot of money. Yes. So. Uh, where was the RFQ put up? I never got it. Huh? I wasn't sure. Do I need to respond to it again? Or how does that work? Mm -hmm. So the library RFQ? No, I, I, I put the original bit in. So that's the only one that's been out. Okay, but I don't need to respond to it. Again. You're good. Yeah. You said RFQ, though. Ah, uh, the RFQ is... see that. Do I need to get involved with that at all? Or? Absolutely not. Okay. So that, um, our FEMA contractor took care of that. I'm assuming it went in the News and Citizen. And elsewhere, um, I'll, I'll check in. I didn't see it online on the website. I think you should put it in. Okay, I, I'll follow through okay. with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And so that's um, me. You're now on a distribution list. I mean, since I've started, every contractor I've spoken with goes on this list. You're the only general contractor right now. It's uh, it's very small, and so. Um, when the, if it goes out to bid again, you're going to get an email directly. And part of FEMA actually suggests that you send out the, RF, the RFP for any project to known contractors uh, right away that you trust and that you work with. Um, and that's that's allowed and actually recommended. I have one other question. Um, contractors that I listed in my bid, are they allowed to also bid on it, or is that not okay? I mean, how does that work? I mean, sub yeah. Subs? Yeah, I think I think it's I think anyone's allowed to bid on it. That's fair and open to the public. Sure. But the I think uh, Ron and I, uh, the FEMA contractor and I, had a conversation today. Um, as we move down the agenda, the projects may get bigger or they might not, and, and there might be some value of putting both buildings together to having one contractor take on both projects because the work right. is so similar, right? Yeah, yeah. And if it goes out to bid again, that's a conversation the board might have or might not have. And has the municipal building gone out yet? No, no. Okay, I didn't think so. No. But I will know when it does? Yeah, so um, we are putting together a scope of work based on the FEMA audit <coughs> last week. And we, now we know the exact square footage of what needs to be done. Sure. The scope of work that's going to go out to the public is much more clear for people to bid on. Sure. And it seems to, we're hoping for a better response with yeah. a true scope of work on this. And, uh, as far as revisions go, when you hear back from that historical preservation, you know, at that point, do I need to revise things? I'm happy to do it. It just, you know, I don't want to we agree on a price and then there's revision. Okay. You know, yeah. Sure. I don't know what that's going to look like, but we definitely, um, that is a wild card that might change what what the outcome of that, that bid might be. And yeah. I think, you know, I think there is a clause in, in the RFP that allows for some, you know, there are unknowns within the construction. And I think that'll probably just be a board decision at that time. I don't know what the ramification, I, I think you have to put it back as they say. And that might be a new bid, or it might be a conversation. I'm still yet to be known. Yeah, just keep moving forward. Absolutely. Okay. So, what you need from us is a motion to rebid, the, repost the RFP. Yeah, uh, and ho is that okay with the trustees too? I mean, I don't know how who's trustees. Uh, the, the, the library the trustees. trustees. Right. Yeah, and so I don't think they're going to deny yeah. checking so a box for. I people. didn't want to overstep their toes too. You know, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm game with that if all parties are copacetic. All right, motion sure. to repost the library RFP with a submission date of. 
Seven response days. date? No. Seven days. Response fine. date. Oh. Seven days. Children. Seven days from posting. Yeah, there you go. Uh, That's exactly my measure. Are, are my numbers and the work that I put into it? Or is that Hold on one second. Okay. Hold on. So, okay. So, a motion for seven days from the date it's posted. Right. And seconded. Yes. Okay. Any discussion? Is this about the dates or posting? No. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. What's your last question? I was just asking, um, you know, if my bid, was that made public for other contractors to look at? Yes. Because yeah. yeah, I just, oh, it's well, it's it's in the package. Package, right? yeah, it, it was in your original bid. It was in the packet, yeah. yes. It was right. So now anybody that bids on it has that information. Anybody that, is, that wants um, to bid. Which? Um, uh, it's not a lie. It's not a lie. <laughs> um, Under different circumstances, I, I would be right there with you. Hi. Sorry. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else on procedure? Can I ask a technical question, which sort of gets to what Brian just asked? We we did circulate an RFP. We did receive a bid. Should we reject the bid that we received before proceeding to the next step of issuing a new RFP? Are we? It seems to me that we've we've got an RFP out there that was responded to. And accepted. And accepted. It was accepted. Uh, uh, I think he's available. I'm just kind of following his guidance. Um, uh, can we send Ron an email and just mm -hmm. deal with it at our next meeting when we accept the next single bid? Yeah. I'll submit it. <laughs> For the same bidder. Yeah. Uh, I tend to agree with Evan. Let's take it as a follow up. Yeah, I just think it's awkward to. Yep, it is awkward. Be in so two let's find positions. out. The let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, flood replacement versus mitigation. We'll just let Tom finish his note. Did you finish your note? Uh, no. Replacements replacing the same. Mitigation is making improvements. Yeah. And there was some discre discrepancy uh, on whether or not a motion was made. I don't think a motion was made. It was just okay. sort of a phone call, and I didn't want to... Uh, there was a motion made. Um, then there was a motion to withdraw the motion, which was approved. Okay. So there was no actual RFP circulating. So we don't have a motion active. Yeah. Um, okay. So mitigation versus... Um, the board is in, has the opportunity now. And really, this is just the... Asking, um, if you don't want to do mitigation, we just move forward with uh, putting it out to bid, getting the work done, moving forward, replacing it as it was. It is the municipal building, correct? Yes. Okay. It, okay, it, and this is different than, hold on, this is different than winterization. The winterization is not the same thing as this mitigation versus no mitigation, yes. or is it? If you choose, it could be. It, Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Can we be clear, like very clear in all the words so, that are chosen? Yeah, so let's, let's, um, so you need to know about the procurement, um, yep. because it relates. If you choose no mitigation, it's not worth doing a temporary installation. We'll just get a contract in there and insulate it once and be done. Mm -hmm. Which is why, so if you choose, we want mitigation, slow it down, then you need to make a response to prepare the municipal building and the library for winter. So it's, depending on your choice for mitigation or not mitigation, answers the next agenda. Mitigation means two steps, no mitigation means right. one So step. we could poll really quick, right? Mitigation or replacement? I'm mitigation. Mitigation. Same. Replacement. I lost. So this is really just permission. So I'm going to now reach out to Ron and Seth at LCPC. Can I just ask a question of Rosemary? Do you have any concerns with what we're talking about? We're just coming very fast. Mm -hmm. We're just going to start to freeze. Yeah, and that goes that goes to the insulation question. If we go the mitigation route, it's going to take longer. So we're going to have to do, I think we need to do a couple of temporary measures. One would be the temporary insulation to protect the building. My understanding from talking with Ron, who I did talk with today, um, is that that is covered under the FEMA expense. The other piece of it that was mentioned earlier was 
I, I really believe that we have to get the building open back up to the public. We can't, we can't shut the building for another six months or eight months while the work gets done. So I think we have to figure out a way to get the public upstairs, which goes to the question of reorganization, reorganizing the upstairs so it makes some sort of sense for you guys. Um, and we also have to secure the hallway because right now you got open, you know, anybody can crawl under the sheetrock and get into the, you know, the main part of the building. So it's a safety issue, it's a access to records issue, it's, you know, all kinds of issues. I'm also told that can be considered part of the protective or temporary measures. What about the safe? The safe? I don't know what you're going to do with the safe, whether you're going to have to do it by appointment or? The vault? The vault. The vault, yeah, yeah. 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 Where you keep your paychecks. I mean, ultimately, that's going to be up to Rosemary how to deal with that. Um, yeah, I think by appointment only for the vault. There's 40, 40 years on um, Yeah, so. The vault is not used as much as it was. Right. So most people can do, most attorneys can do title searches. And, but there's a few things that they can't. Right. But my question is, do we know that it opens and locks and unlocks? I'm not sure. I, I haven't been there for two months. So. Seems like I asked you that question while we were driving here. I know the, the last time I tried so it. So can we call somebody and we, get them in? We could turn the knob. Yeah. To verify or we could not even turn the knob. Well, let's uh, just put Evan inside. Close it. We did that for two months. Well, you know, there is a, there is a, I was gonna say a safety valve. There's, there's, there's an emergency line. But it might not work. You can't work. get locked inside. But it might not okay. work. Yeah, and we need to get, if we're going to stay upstairs. That's a lawsuit waiting to happen. We need to get some permanent desk. We just can't be on. Um, yeah, I think that goes. We, we already authorized somebody to come in and help you develop a plan. So I think yeah. we, we sh should come back with a plan. And yeah. uh, All right, so if we're going the mitigation route, what do you need? Um, that's great. Uh, Ron and I will reach out to Seth to work on who the engineers and the architects are to help get that ball moving and then to get the team to make sure. We need engineers and architects to do a little bit of mitigation work. This is going to be... 10-year uh, project? The advantage of doing it that way is um, FEMA needs, they need a, a really accurate cost estimate, first of all. If we do the mitigation, the, the engineer or the architect can then come up with, um, you know, a floodgate plan, um, a membrane on the outside of the building to floodproof. All of that can be built into the... You can do it in steps over time. It doesn't have to be... Right. Yeah. The preliminary costs are less yeah. than 100000 so we should be able to do it at 90%. What cost is less than 100000 to, to do the membrane and the flood gates for the municipal building, there are some quick conversations. It seems like... But you have to show it through the engineering. Right. But it's that's step one to say, hey, is this going to happen? Is for, right. to provide those estimates. So and I guess FEMA will look at it and say, is it reasonable? Yeah, you have your temperature work with Seth. For the intermediary solutions, what do we need? So that's you just want to work with Ron on a quick RFP? I think we all agree on the needing to reopen the office and having a plan. Yep. I think we all, nobody's disagreeing with insulation. Yeah. So well, we're headed down this road. Yes, okay. we all, all the measures, including tape on the floor, um, cubicles upstairs, plywood over holes and downstairs, all of that is part of his emergency uh, preparedness and it's covered by FEMA in the response. And so then, let's just do it. So how do yeah. we get that RFP out yeah, like, right away? Uh, I'll take care of it. Okay, excellent. Uh, all right. So, so we can do the next steps afterward. Do you want to see the RFP? Yeah, I, th I, yeah, think, yeah, I, yeah, I think we should see it before it's posted, but at our next meeting, it would be nice to have it in front of us. And just approve it. Um, and as far as... As far as the office goes. Oh, wait, can we just say the RFP thing? Yeah, we do want to just see it at our next meeting, but we don't ever just see something and be like, oh, yeah, that looks good. So if you could please just distribute to everybody in advance, like at least a few days in advance of our next meeting so that they can give you feedback. That and then that would be very we can get to the point where we can be like, yeah, good. Okay. Oh, so we'd have another long meeting. We got one tonight. Yeah. Don't worry. We have another You're going to have four uh, okay. meetings. What else? Yes, so that way, while we're waiting, and like again, it's paid for by FEMA, and the removal is paid for by 
the contractor to the to the repair to the construction. So both putting it in and taking it out is covered by FEMA. And so we didn't really talk about the library building. My take is we should go the mitigation approach there as well because it might involve getting reimbursed for flood gates or flood doors or well, it's putting the heater, the you know, the, the electric system upstairs, the electric the box, upstairs, yeah. all of that is part of that, right? One one way to think about replacement versus mitigation is replacement, they're gonna they're gonna look at what you had and they're gonna give you money to put back what you had, not make any improvements whatsoever. We asked about moving the meter, the electrical meter that's owned by the village electric up, and they wouldn't do that. Yeah. You know, it's like literally right what it was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They'll, they'll pay you for that. So. Got it. So um, I feel like we just touched. Do you need anything else from the library? Um, you guys good? Are you okay if we group the town and library into the same, just like get both of them done? Yeah. Are there any emergency measures other than you have a window and then you have insulation? If you think of anything, just let Tom know. All right. The heat is working in the library. What's that? Yeah, we the talked about working? that two weeks ago. The heat is working now. It is like 52. Beautiful. Is there two windows, technically? Two windows. Because I uh, put the sandbags in one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for that reminder, Jason. It was a storm uh, window. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, winter preparedness. I feel like we just talked about that. Is there anything else we need to talk about? No. Call them emergency measures. Excellent. Right. Uh, emergency measures. Municipal roof and siding inspection and repair. Might as well just. Okay, Send it. the roof leaked. New splash, roof leaked. There was flooding in the municipal building that wasn't from down below? It was flooding from the top, so we're flooding from all angles at this point. That's good. Uh, and so we think it's due to that bell clock. Oh, the bell tower, bell who, did, who did the roofing job when it was removed? We've, we've never finished the Slide it. top, the tower, and that's where the water is coming in. There's no new sliding on the tower. Can we get? Uh, it's probably a plant with rotten too. Can we? The cement board. Yeah, I've heard about that. Okay, so can we just get an RFP to finish the clock tower and find out what it costs? And we're going to have to bring it to the village, too. But I think we should just start the process. Are we going to be able to afford that? Do you want to replace carpets and stairs and ceilings? Actually, I would love to replace the ceilings and the carpet in that place. The siding is down at the lower building. Up on the rack, it didn't get flooded, so it's safe. Oh, oh that's good. Is, is any of that eligible for insurance reimbursement? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, we do have pictures. The thing is, like, is it going to cost us enough to warrant a claim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It could result in higher rates, which I prefer. Was it a thousand dollar deductible? And a thousand dollar deductible? Yeah, I don't feel like we should claim it. What? Our insurance score will change, and we'll get higher rates. Are we replacing the siding or just finding a hole? Part of a pool, aren't we? We are part of a pool, and okay. and the only reason the, the I don't really don't think the rates are up there. It's not like traditional not insurance where okay. it, what, what what they do is they show they show a list of your claims over time and the claims drop off you know after a certain period of time but it doesn't affect doesn't affect the rate you pay but what's was there it's self insured the floor was wet the ceiling is damaged yes ceiling's damaged. Yeah. 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 below the floor is not wet but we have no idea the root cause of this? I think it's because it rained sideways. It was when we were having that really hard rain. Yeah. Last see the movie for us. Is well. that the first time it's rain happened since the uh, like roof has been replaced? Roof it happened tarp. a few years ago. It did? It's on the siding. Why would you use roof tarp? That's for roofs. You when they did the roof tarp. replacement, I, it was after I left, but they were talking about putting a cricket across. To avoid that, do you know if that ever got done? I don't think so. Yeah. Would that be something inside the tower? Mm -hmm. No, it would have been outside. It would have been a, the roof so the cricket side. would be between the roof that comes down like this and the tower, the wall of the tower, to keep the water. It's like flashing. Well, a cricket actually is like a little sub roof. Really small. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
you know, in be in between the two that would I keep the water. It sounds like a job for a flex seal. Okay, so <laughs> we just need to <laughs> we just need to get an RFP and get it. We don't need, we don't need to go through insurance for that. What's that? The flex seal job. Yeah, right. <laughs> Send this. Spray it. I love flex seal. Okay. Same thing, just get out of pretty early and you'll get plenty of commentary, I'm sure. <laughs> Except for okay. from Mark, he doesn't read his email. Except Mark. Mark, Mark won't comment. <laughs> that is true. Shane won't do that. It depends fair. on the topic. Um, appointments, committees for public public requests. Jason, I promise we'll get to you soon. All right, take your time. All right, <laughs> so automobile uh, uh, access after the industrial park infrastructure. Let's do that one. Which one are we on? Oh, we're, we're skipping 13 to go to 14. Yep. Yes. So uh, Rob reached out to me. I reached out to Tom. Um, the Sterling Snow Rider Snow Riders just want to talk about bridge repair on the Vermont State University property that leads into the town's Jewett property where the industrial park will, uh, will be eventually. And they just want clarity on start of construction and their ability to access town property before, during, and after construction so that they can determine whether or not they want to commit to bridge repair. That's a lot. I'm really confused right now, I'm not going to lie. Do you know, do you know the where the snowmobile trail so comes through the property right now? The Jewett property. Comes through the Jewett property? Yeah, it comes right, comes right down the road. Oh, it comes down the yeah. Right, yeah, it goes up there, and then does it go to like Drag Lot Road or whatever and go over? Uh, sorry, we've got Drag Lot, go across Orange property. Yep, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, I know about where you are. So basically we come down the road right across from Jolly's, the access road to get up to the field. Right. You guys got your grant to put the road and infrastructure in. If it's going to happen this winter, it ain't going to happen this winter. Okay. Highly yeah. doubtful. So nothing worry about it this winter. No. Nope. If it does, I'll be so blissfully happy on that side. That's I will remember figured, this conversation. Make sure. One, two. Is there an actual plan for the road and infrastructure? And like, so, what we're wondering is after. You guys put all that in. Are we going to have enough room to have the trail continue down there? And if well, would we have enough room, and would we have permission to do that? And I know it's a hard question to answer because it could happen years down the road. That's right. I could be dead by then. <laughs> Won't be my problem. <laughs> um, I can offer a thought. Sure. And this is just one person, but um, uh, there is a plan. Um, I think. My perspective is the snowmobile trail would need to be moved to the perimeter of the property. That's totally fine. And then, and then you'd have access to Jolly's. Um, so I, I think it's still very doable to have a trail there. Okay. It, ain't, it isn't going to be in the same place it is now. I think that's, that's okay pretty as clear. Right. So, so our issue is Vast will not let us travel 90 degrees down Route 50. So I can't come on Route 15, travel down it, and then pull into Jolly's. So right now we're directly across. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the only property that we own. There's a 100-foot strip where the road comes down. Right. So you'd be within that 100-foot strip. Okay. Exactly right. where within that 100-foot strip? I can't tell you right now, and it's really up to the rest of the board, too. To, that's just my two cents. Yeah. The thing with the road is that the plans are on the state website. Like there's drawings of infrastructure on the state on the town, town, town website. website. Okay. Did, I say state? Did Mumley ever so it'll show you bonds? the right of way, and it'll show oh, you where yeah, utilities will go, so. yeah. and it talks about the existing trail. So I think that might be what you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So from my perspective, it's doable, but again, I'm just one board member. Everybody else should weigh in. The That's only right. thing that we'll I would just say is that. Office. Is that the road, like where the trail is right now and where the road is, when you think about utilities going underground, I just don't know which side of the road the utilities would go under. And I don't know if this would be a long-term issue or a short-term issue, but there could be 
either an issue with you being on the right side of the property and having to cross over the new road, the new town road. Mm -hmm. I think that actually would probably be the case just from looking at how close the trail is to the property line. Yeah, I mean, right now you know I mean? we're pretty much on the right, so mm -hmm. it's real close there. Yeah. It's real mm -hmm. close, right. yeah. So Towards Linda Jones's? Yeah. Towards the Bradley Towards House? Towards the Bradley House? Yeah. Okay. West, yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's just what I would say, like longer term looking at a few years out as we go through construction, there may be access problems. Okay. But it wouldn't be this one, or? But it won't be this one. Yeah, yeah. it exactly sort of. Like, we're yeah, we, we have several landowners from this stretch to Hoag Road, and if we're not going to have access, yeah. there's no point in us doing all this work. Yeah, yeah. I think if you look, if you take a look at the plans and just see what you think uh, in terms of what's mapped out already, you'll see what I mean. As long as we're here, can we access where we've accessed yes. in the past? Oh, you did? Oh, you're just the best. <laughs> so, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Go for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's what I've got right now. I mean, I think we probably could get in your way during the construction period. Sounds like that's going to be good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But we'll we'll keep your concern in in the back of our mind as we continue. We're, we're, we've just got a set of concept plans right now. Sure. We we need to develop the, you know the full blown plans, right. but I uh, think we can take another that eighty grand or so. How wide a right way do they need? Well, eight, 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 to ten, eight, eight to ten feet is typically the width of the trail. Is that wide enough for the groomers? Absolutely. Yeah. Feet? Yeah. Seems like that we have to be able to figure out. I think we should be able to figure out. Have them be yeah. to the westerly side, easterly, easterly side. Easterly side. I don't know about the There's east a, side. That's what I'm it's saying. It's only 100 we're feet. They're getting right super into the weeds. I think okay, we answered yeah. their question for tonight. And we're running the behind. point is that I think you need to look at the map and look at the east side and yeah, see what I mean about yeah, the road and the right of way. Yeah. Well, we've got 100 really feet there, there, so there should be room for it somewhere. And where we put it, I, I get it. But it, it may not be on the east side. It yep. may be on the west side. Yep. Yeah. Possible. We're not, we're not, we're not. As long as you can cross it. Yep. Beauty. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thanks for waiting. Have fun tonight, guys. No, you're we're staying for the rest really of that. We're half done. Uh, I don't yeah. even know if we're half done yet. <laughs> if we're half done. Started at 5.30. You didn't bring me any pizza, have, Bobby. Uh, do you have a specific <laughs> agenda item that you're here for, Scott? <coughs> are, there, are you here for Holmes Meadow? I'm just listening. Okay. And do you have anything specific, Howard? I'm here at her request. Oh, Casey, oh, Casey's in the corner. Okay. Uh, let's go skate park. Man, you're really jumping around on me. I know, sorry. We could have done beautification today real quick. Skate park. Good review. Hold up, here you are. So these are the bids that we're opening? Yes. Okay, we have a bid from Skate Parker Construction Inc. Parker Construction Vermont. And one from Standard Construction, Jeffrey Hall and Michael Parker. Um, okay, so Parker Construction, $64,000 to furnish all material labor, complete in accordance with above specifications. I'm just going to push this this way. That's, this, that's the Parker construction. And then for standard construction, total cost $36,530. Um, includes everything from groundbreaking through completion, clean up a building with a new half pipe, which includes but not limited to site work, setup, rebar, 
shop creek, concrete placement, ceiling, caulking, cleanup, mobilization, painting, and welding cap ends on existing rails. Start TPD upon contract. And what were we initially budgeting for this project? Does anybody mm -hmm. remember? Okay. We had an initial number in mind. What well, was the initial project, budget right? number? I want to say it was 50. Well, the, in, in, well, the initial budget number is a couple of years old, and that was in around 30, or 39, 32-ish thousand dollars. But I want to make sure that you guys have copies of the available, list of available funds. Um, if you don't, I have them here. That would be back helpful. Of the packet. Back of what packet? Okay. This packet? Casey? Yes, we already have. Yeah, it was like, you know, since, oh. since even last year. Thank you very much. Help it out. Thank you. Design sketch too, but I don't know if you need that. Just FYI. Which ones? Seal bids are so difficult sometimes. Are you done with this? What's that? Are you done? I am done with that. Um, I have one question on the. I noticed this guy is using 4,000 psi concrete. Or was that part of the bid spec, or is that just something yeah. he's proposing to do? 4,000 psi seems. Barely rugged. I, I Holds it for the freeze weather, doesn't it? Yes. Not if I may. Yeah. 4,000 psi tends to stand up better in, in spalling cold weather. That's what he just said. Oh, I didn't hear him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're good. We're on the same page. I didn't say, I didn't even have to be, but yeah, I guess. So, yeah, so this says we have 32314 available to spend. And we can closely close any revenue gap by 5000 and likely more. What are the two bids? Revenue on here. 36.5 and 64. 64 even. Is this, are these numbers that you, that are here, Casey, the numbers that we have in the, like if I look at the budget, will no, they match? I, no. I, I, or rather, I guess I don't understand the question. Are they numbers that you have <coughs> where? In our budget. No, like, I don't. In the town budget. In the town. Is this town cash? It's in, yes. Yes. Some of it arrived after last town meeting was printed. There's really no so details in there, but if you yeah. look at pictures, they're cool. If I look at cool existing pictures? at our cool current... Cool pictures, yeah. If, they clearly got some if I look at our current going. budget report, I will see this money. That's what I'm saying. Is that right? Do you have a copy of this? Some of it's last year's money. And it would be in reserves? Mm -hmm. well, look at that, Duncan. Hmm? Look at that. Hey. Yeah. Two concrete things. That one's kind of cool. You said there's no detail. Pictures are worth a thousand words. There must be like 80,000 words in here. Maybe a hundred thousand. Glad you think he's funny, Howard. What? Everybody well, in the audience tends funny. to think I'm funny. Well, yeah. Yeah, now and then. So, Rosemary, in this budget sheet that you gave us the other day? We have the 11798 plus whatever grant money we received last year. Mm -hmm. And you've got skate well, park grant 2023-125? Yeah. And then due to skate park reserve from prior years, 7870? Look on your, your the other side of the sheet. Is there a skate park reserve from the there is, 11,798. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty close to the. Yeah, that's not. Do I have that? Restricted to, Do I have that? You did yeah, from you last, did. last meeting. Here, you want a copy of it? I don't know if you still have Oh, from the last meeting. Is that yeah, a copy? I 
Yeah. I, I was just gonna, I was just gonna share Duncan's. Okay. I don't want yours. That's no it's on it. So the 16 that you're that you've got on this sheet is the 11, 798 plus the 780, You know, some things that my customers are starting to do is they're doing the sealed bid opening and they're not awarding it until their next meeting. That's kind of nice. Well, that's always. Yeah. Is it still in there? I don't no, know. It it was flying around me a minute ago. I set it your way. Thanks a lot. Because <laughs> there's no detail with one of them. What is, um, sorry, Casey, what does reserve fund teacher request mean? Uh, well, you can't count on getting, I mean, getting funds out of the reserve fund takes a request to the selectmen. So while, uh, we, oh, I see. while we have, I, while it's there, I don't have permission for a committee as an application. I got you. Okay. I hear you. Loud and clear. Do you want this one? Sure. Mm -hmm. you, you, have have to to you have to ask it loudly, though. Um, so the due to funds from prior years, do, do you show those in the balance sheet? It's shown as a restricted fund. In here? In here. Yeah. Got it. What was the what was the low bit again? Thirty six five. Thirty six five thirty. No, thirty six three fifty. Five thirty three fifty. Five thirty. Yeah. Ten thirty six. Which one do you use dyslexic? You transpose huh? your numbers. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Are you jabbing me when I'm actually looking at the numbers? <laughs> yes. Much, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I inspire that confidence. <laughs> I know that's uh, a big that difference. A lot. That's a lot, but you know, it's not unusual to have a huge difference between difference between the bids. Uh, yes, yeah, the, the largest the reason. The well, first of all, Parker's a bigger firm, uh, but the really the, the significant reason is that Standard Construction built the original half pipe, uh, original concrete feature, so they are quite intimately familiar with the terrain, with, mm -hmm. with what they're right. joining up to, et cetera, et cetera. So. Did we ever get to the back part? Sorry. Can it. I like that answer, Mark. Um, <coughs> okay. Do we know what we want to do? What's the, what's the difference? I would like this clarification. Or this. Um, 36, 530. That's the one. That's the lowest one. So we're roughly $4,200 shy of the bid. Now, standard construction. They don't have a breakdown of town responsibilities, so they're 100% doing all the project. Um, no. They, like, we've talked with them about... And I think the RFP had the language of what the town was going to do. And so I, mean, I think that's just going to be they only restated in the in the bid. And it's not all that much. Just hide just hide your seating, right? Well, well moving dirt to the burn when yep. you're ready to Parker's construction had it as moving from the dirt that's piled to the berm that's gonna surround the concrete. Oh. Parker's okay. construction had it as remote um, barrier post and cable before construction site, provide a sufficient dry well or drainage outlet, and required permitting, provide bank run gravel, delivered one to two days, um, delivered and one to two days of town support with equipment and staff. Where are you reading? Um, on Parker's. Oh. Wondering, like, are they expecting the same thing? Say the bank grass and mulch provide signage 
an appropriate oversight to ensure the finished park is closed for 21 days until the says they're asking for bank for ground line. What's the, the one quote was 64, one quote was 36 by 30? What's the cost over the town, the bank run gravel? It is, yeah. yeah. But that was the more expensive one. The one that's more affordable doesn't say doesn't, anything. Doesn't say anything. They have a lot of pictures of some pretty cool work. I'm going to be honest. Some pretty cool stuff. Uh, Short $4,316.83. Well, we'll just get Mark to not take a paycheck for a year. Or four. Right. But we, we have a pretty good... That's four slides. Huh? Yeah, you, so you're, you're planning to raise the balance? I don't. So one way or another, we we'll raise your fund. Okay. And this is getting done this year, this fall? Um, and I, as far as the <coughs> schedule goes, uh, Standard is willing to look at doing it in the next couple of weeks, if possible. But, you know, it, as it says, um, to be discussed upon contract, it, it could be in the spring if they deem that it has to be looking at realities. When we talked about at our meeting with Tom down at the skate park was my crew was going to supply ditching material as much as needed yep. and hydro seed. That was, that was it. it. No moving. Well, that, that was the partner bed that had the other stuff. Yeah, so I'm just saying that was what was discussed as far as my crew. Right. And we also promised removal of fill equivalent of what was brought in. The entire firm. That was at the last meeting where you weren't at. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> the condition of the floodplain permit, right, is to remove the fill that was brought in last fall and then, um, and also to remove the quantity of fill equal to the amount of the concrete, which uh, Scott calculated. So, whether or not you bring in, it might be easier to bring in fill and then replace to split, to take out more, or, it might, or you can reuse the stuff that's there. That's what they're. The hope, I believe, was that you would bring the pile from there, A to B, around for the berm. Is that what you thought? That's Phil. And we were bringing it? From the pile where it is now. Okay. To go to the back filling around the half pipe, and then hydro seeding that. And that was talked about at the last meeting? And then yeah. also removal of material. Two it, yeah, whatever the difference was, because ultimately, we have to displace that. We yeah, we can't have more fill there than was there. I don't before. Yeah, I, I didn't. Maybe I'm remembering it weird. I didn't get the sense that that had to happen right now, but it definitely has to happen for the floodplain uh, compliant. Essentially, like if you bring a yard of material in, you got to bring a yard of material out at some point. Oh, I understand. Just so it doesn't lose that capacity of water. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. I didn't know it had to happen that day, but it had, it had to be a plan in place, I thought. Am I wrong about that, Scott? We didn't talk it, about it, timing. It, it evolved when we were doing the permit work. It, yeah, yeah. And I think there's a general consensus amongst a lot of the towns right now is keeping things as best you can at net you know, zero or whatever you want to call it. So you bring things in, you bring things out, and you still have the same displacement. The gold standard would be, and this is what I'm sort of excited about with the buyouts, is lower the elevation completely. So now we're getting better in our thought process for long term elevation. Did you hear me mention that when we were talking to Stephanie uh, about the pivot case? I did, thank you for bringing that up. I was going to, but thank you for doing the due diligence. My only concern was not to interrupt anybody, is when me and Tom were down at the meeting, that didn't get talked about. I promised some other committees work in the fall that's on my report. I promised them last fall. So I'm. I think it was pretty There's only so many hours in a day. That's right. Yeah, uh, I agree. So I guess what you're saying is for. For your side of things, if we did approve something, it would be preferable to shoot for the spring. That way they still had it for the summer season, but it would work better. If the winter holds off, we could potentially do it. I just don't want to make promises to something that I can't 
right? I don't it's know. Nice I mean, there's tomorrow. three other spots in my uh, my report that's going to have what we've committed to already that we're tackling. I mean, there's, we don't even have a commitment that they're going to build it this fall. Either. Yeah, I know. I'm just so saying. It's just, um, I'd be surprised when if we they talked did. to the yeah. park. See, uh, at that point, you, you had said that fall was better for you, which was why we were one minute. Yeah, and what I so what I tell when we talked in the we park. We shouldn't get into this because you already committed to other things. Yeah, previously. I know. I just want to make it clear to her that I did not. Uh, I did. I said fall was better time to do it because yeah. we were just going to hide your seat and give them dirt, not do right. the project. Right. Yeah, the we, removal. We of have to work. Obviously, material. we have to work with what you can do. So. If that erases pressure to do it this fall, then that's then so be it. Uh, yeah. Where are the bids? Uh, Duncan's hogging them. And then I'm back over here. Uh, I'm going to take all the pictures. pictures. Yeah. I liked the picture one. Yeah, that's the one. So that's the so one. What's our action? Yeah. What's our action item? Um, we need to that's decide if we're going to award a bid or not. We either Casey, accept a bid or we reject any and all bids. Casey is guaranteeing to cover the gap. Which have before. Yeah. This is only, what, $4,200 gap? Uh, 42 dollars 60 and 83 cents. It's very exact. If we use more than the 10000 or is that what the... That's with all three funds. That's with that's So it's with, not this number, it's that 11,000 number. Yeah, I pulled it off Rosemary's yeah. um, report last on time. Yeah. So, so that would be clearing out your the reserve. action is we need a motion to we either approve kind of don't or accept. You want to keep, have, have a little bit of Yeah. Okay, so whatever, like the balance of that. So if you want to have a thousand dollars in, then the gap isn't forty-three thousand, forty-three hundred. It's fifty-three hundred, sixty dollars. Because we were using ten. You right? use ten out of the total. I'm just saying that. Okay, that math doesn't work. Then. Yeah, this I don't. Casey's this is Casey's account. Um, this has not been verified by Rosemary's. I think we have to use Rosemary's report from two weeks ago, pulled the numbers out of this, because this is what's actually on hand. Well, the 1178 that is matches. 11798 matches. Yeah. So there's two on and then the front page. So your grant's on hand. Is that on hand? Like, I don't know where that 16 grant's on hand. It must be in the budget. That's not in the cash on hand, Rosemary? This should be a 12000 Can you hand that down to Rosemary, Duncan? Yeah. If you take the three accounts of Yeah, there, there is 12000 We don't receive yet, Casey. Yeah, there's a 12000 12, reserve 12,500. We got 12500 last year. Uh, we have, I know we, we had 15000 by the end of 2022, mm -hmm. and then we got $1,000 from the co-op later. Um, which didn't show up in the budget because, you know, uh, in the end, January, January, January. So I know Pictures. we have 16,000 in grants. Because it was 10 and 5. So. Are you looking for prior years mm -hmm. besides mm -hmm. 2023? Yeah. Yeah, because. Oh, yeah, so, so we can make a motion. I mean, we can make a motion and do it contingent on or because I think that Rosemary and Casey need to figure out details. If spring works out better for the highway guys, do we just want to make a definitive motion next meeting after there's been a second to look at? I would support that. And that's what you're saying at this point, Jason, is that you don't see it happening in fall? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it might not. It might not. I don't know what Mother Nature is going to dish us. Yeah. We could have snow at the end of October or November. I mean, three or four years ago, we plowed 23 times in November. I'm not sure. And I don't know what Mother Nature is going to give us for spring. We could have a bad mud season again. I'm not sure. Yeah. It's true. They're like such volatile seasons. <laughs>
Are we going to be in summer or winter? I don't know. Like till tomorrow. Maybe next week we could possibly get frost. We're not meeting next week. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's crazy weather. We are meeting next week. We are both meeting next week. Seriously? Uh, okay, so you want to wait till next meeting, which puts us in November. So if you do it tonight, we'll know when it's going to happen. Like, they're going to put it out to, and find out. So we'll know if it's happening, like, the first week of November or... I don't know. Oh, okay. okay, and this place is saying that it includes everything from groundbreaking through completion, set yeah, that one did. of your You're building, good. Yeah, that blah, one blah, 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 yeah. Yeah. site work. Yeah. Like, this sounds like they're going to do all of that. That one does, yeah. The one you give me, I read. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like it's it good. sounds like they're going to do all of the moving of materials from what is written in that first paragraph. Do you have a copy of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yes, I do. It's a good thing, correct? I think it is. But you, you were down there and met with them when they were there. You know, no. Was it? Yeah, the people who fit on and know. Uh, I don't think we never know. Oh, no. I'm, I'm just not seeing the moving of materials word. Well, when it says groundbreaking, everything from groundbreaking through oh, completion, okay. including oh. cleanup of the new, which includes but not limited to site work, like the site work, the right. setup. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Well, it, it will work out one way or another. I can't speak to the mind of. Uh, Bitter because I'm not in, in his mind. I, I I read those words and it makes sense to me, but I can't but answer the question about the Did you promise the bit, this bitter that the town would do stuff? The RFP Says. stated some stuff that the town okay. would do. So I guess, you know, and it's always contingent on if they can. Yes. But those things are in the RFP. It seems to me we got to move, move forward, accept this bid. Great, great tonight. Is that a formal motion? I'm looking at Madam Chair over here. You make motions, I don't. Go for it. Understanding that there might be a funding gap that has to be made up? No, I'm. Expecting that they'll, they'll make up the funding. Yeah. Okay, make your motion, Mark. My, my motion is to accept the, the bid for 36530 from standard construction. Yeah. Are there any contingencies? Um, are contingent? No, I think we accept the bid. If the town can't do the work, then the project won't go forward. But I think we should. Move the project forward now. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? There you go. Dice piece of that. That is one way to word it, Mark. Yeah. Do you have a second? That's the funding gap for me. Would you like to second contingent on? You can make one. No, it's not dead yet. I'll second it for the purpose of discussion. Okay, discussion. You can add a friendly admit. admit, admit. What do you want to discuss? It's the funding gap for me. Okay, tell Mark. Mark, it's the funding gap. <laughs> Did you just write a check for the difference? <clears throat> I have police that they part can raise the money. I do too. That's why I'm comfortable. They've done well at fundraisers before. Okay, so is there anything to discuss or are we voting? Vote away, dearest. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Casey. Okay, yes. All right. I, I would very much appreciate somebody getting back to us and reconciling the difference between what Rosemary shows and what you show? Yeah, and I don't I have some of the information in, you know, the more information that you guys have. 
Yeah, I mean, because what, what Rosemary is showing here is really like a checkbook balance. Right, and I don't have it. Yeah, yeah. So, so it would just I'm be... I'm loath to take up any of her time, so I... Yeah. I'm at, at, I'm at Rosemary's disposal. Okay. Okay. Uh, now 13. We're going to move on. We're going to go to 13? We're, no, we're going to go to Jason's report. Uh, we're going to go backwards. That's way backwards. I don't know. That's all right. Jason? We can give up if we want. What do you got, Jason? We want to hear from you. All right. So we finished the Ben Obergrant since I've last talked to you. Uh, Good. And it is beautiful. Yeah, the grass is coming in nice. Yeah, yeah, it's did a great job around Woodward, Woodward Road. Yeah, well, that was a special. <laughs> and yeah. the grading right in front of my house is good too. <laughs> We're just joking. I say they did grade in front of your house, right? Cause I, yeah, they yeah. Did. I say everything's been touched, graded wise, except for Mines Road from Mackey Road to the intersection, which is on the schedule for this week. Uh, Waterman Road and River Road East. Uh, will be graded and that will be the last one in Wickham Island because of and you did, excessive you did wear. The intersection work yep. The Patch Road intersection has all been completed. That's uh, just so beautiful, I must say. Looks good. I like it. Equipment of repair and maintenance. Yeah, we added some uh, plant mix slash gravel uh, to Upper French Hill, uh, about 14 loads to this section from River Road. Uh, Sorry, Reservoir Road to uh, the box culvert by uh, Cotner's place. And then uh, we did the water line project as completed for the skate rink. Right. Yeah, the salt truck is all ready for winter maintenance. Wings, uh, uh, sander, and, or salter is all on it. When we ended the season, did we end the season with a salt truck in a good place? Like all the issues that we had previously are resolved. On the record, I don't, and Tom knows that truck, not that truck, but of that kind of truck, I don't know if our issues are ever going to be resolved completely with that truck. First thing I said on the day I took the tour, don't get replaced. That day, you got to be like a squat with a plow on the wing. So that's the honest truth. It's, it's not really the right truck for our application. So I think there's always going to be. Let's not talk about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Move on. Yeah. Okay. Oh, come on. Uh, I want a detailed discussion. All right. You can call Jason. He'll talk to you. We have about uh, we have about sixty more loads to haul winter sand, so we're hoping to have that finished up uh, at the end of next week. The tandems they're underway of getting ready for winter as we speak. There's some head frames on one. Uh, they went through and made sure all their lights are working today. They got their winter tires all up and ready to go on. Uh, fall maintenance. That's what they're up to now. Uh, and the upcoming project. Uh, what the, does fall maintenance mean? Sorry. Well, fall road maintenance, like we're going around and leaf blowing all the oh. leaves out of the ditches so they don't oh. clog up culverts. And I thought it was like soft cushion for when you fell. Yeah, I just have to tell you, you blew that song off my lawn and was not impressed. <laughs> but we do it to everybody because I treat everybody the same. Yeah, so. Yeah. Fair. It's pretty. It's a pretty. I, I was wondering, what the hell is all that racket down there? And then I, went down. I want it on the front of the grater. That was something else. That was. Yeah. Okay, that thing me with Jason, you just keep talking. All right. Me. So, the upcoming projects, as soon as we got the trucks wrapped up in the winter sand, they were my priorities to get done this week and next. And then it's going to be the Beards Park handicap accessible picnic table, installation, the base for it, and getting stuff moved around down there for that. And then it was going to be the skate park wooden ramp removal, but I haven't really heard too much confirmation back from anybody on that, so I'm not sure where we're at. We just got our denial note from VLCT, so that allows the funeral process to move forward. Okay. So we'll, you'll hear more probably. Next and then there, there wasn't one on here yet because I haven't made contact with her yet about the paths because uh, i got to have a redraw the paths on the ground of where they want them so we can do them. But that's on the that's going to happen with the same time frame as the installation of the base within the, in that week. 
I'm glad you're talking about this because um, I told Tom at one point that I thought a piece of the skate park might be in the river. And then I was like, no, that's not it. But I was looking at the wrong part of the river. I still think there might be a piece of the skate park in the river. On the So when you're going out of town, when you're driving west out of town on Route 15, if you look up the river, up the bend. There's a little the house, a little doghouse thing or something looking yeah, on something the bend. Yeah, like that. I've seen it, yeah. I don't know what that is. from the bridge before Johnson Park and Garden? No. No, I from mean, go past the municipal building. So the river bends, right? Yeah, the river goes, like when you're going into the village, you can see this side, and when you're going out of the village, you can see this side. When you're going out of the village, you look up, like you look up the river a little bit, and on the left side is this structure with like a steel metal thing, it looks like. Maybe it's a dog house. I, I think it's the shed. It went by us when we were doing the evac on... <laughs> <laughs> River, uh, River yeah. West. So that but, would be upstream of the skate park. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. It was weird. It was uh, with that much water uh, going that way. But it, sometimes... I mean, I don't know. The thing is that it's literally things. coming from, like, God only knows where. It's Probably not like it was coming from that. Yeah, right? It could have. Anyway, there's something... Does it have a sign there. on it saying return to sender? It actually says an Evan patch. You better look at it. What? <laughs> Does it have a section of broken sewer so, pipe? And then the last piece of info I have... Yeah. It's mainly for just informational purposes. We took out 749 loads of ditchings this <laughs> summer. You didn't put it on Westcombe Road. Tandem loads? No, yeah, tandem loads. So it, <laughs> I did the math for you on this sheet. So it's 10,486 yards of material. So we only wow. put 5,000 yards up a winter for sand. So it's a lot. That is a lot. Oh, did you with it all bring it to Evan's house? A lot is up there. Wow. Yeah. In the I was going to say, Mark's got some at his place. Yeah. Anybody that wants it or wanted it in the immediate area is the thing. So I take everybody's uh, I don't want it. information, <laughs> and when we're working in that area or close by, that's when it's ideal for us. Yeah. Can any of it be reprocessed for topsoil? Or? Well, I, the topsoil stuff goes to the shop and gets screened out, but uh, anything that's like a woods dirt, we don't really bring down and, or it's got some rocks in it and stuff that are big round rocks that usually goes up. I was to down there with a shovel the other day. It's pretty rooty. It is. It's not. It's, when we get into some nice stuff, I bring it usually to the shop to get repurposed. But there's only been probably 25, 30 loads of stuff that's gone to the shop this mm -hmm. year. But we did screen out the stuff that had the ditch stone in it from the. When we did plot road and saved a ditch stone, we got a load of ditch stone back out of it. So, yeah. That's all I have. We're pretty resourceful. Where does that ditch stone come from? The ditch stone that we use? Yeah, that we use. Uh, it comes from Percy's up on, uh, uh, by the Morrisville Town Garage on Cochran Road. And where the hell do they get it from? They well, blast the, their ledge pit. They have, yeah. Oh, they blast yeah. Their and then they run it through their <clears throat> crusher. And that's why we, one of the reasons we like it from there is uniform, consistent all the time. And it's not like a, Usually it's like a one foot minus that a lot of quarries do. Yeah. They just do five and eight inch. So that's all it is. So there's no little minuses filling in the voids. So it gives you a long life of the stone in the ditch filling up yeah. before you have to deal with it. Okay. okay. Uh, what else you got, Jason? Anything? That's all I have on my report for tonight. Is there anything on the agenda that you need to be here for? There might be one thing on there for the... 22? I think so. Is that the gravel pit? Yeah. yeah. Okay, maybe we can pull that one up. Um, okay. Get to be determined. What does that mean? Well, okay. Go for it. Um, Go for it. So I spoke to Jeff Percy at Bell Percy and um, he's kind of made the, got a feeling for the agreement and it is going to be purchasing material out of uh, the town pit, and then we would be buying back at cost, which is so that they would be paying six, we would be buying at, uh, I think it's 11.25. Yeah. So it's, that's the two for one ratio that you heard. The dollars and cents of it for the agreement is actually they're buying at six, <coughs> we're paying at um, 11.25 or 75. Um, the one piece he did not mention before is that we're bringing over a significant amount of winter sand. Um, Dude and I haven't even talked about this, so I haven't drawn it up. 
but he wants us to buy half the material back as sand. Oh. Winter sand because um, he feels that he doesn't, that's mostly what we're bringing. We're bringing over half sand. He wanted us to buy half sand. And, um, but once that's finished drafted, I think you and I will sit down okay. and uh, make sure you're good with it. That was the only Which hiccup. Which is in the lower process. per ton, right? Uh, higher per ton. I don't know. Yeah, it's twelve. Sand is higher. Uh, at Percy, the sand's twelve dollars a ton, and that the other place I go, it's eight twenty-five. But a ton of sand is heavier than. Ha. Ha ha. How? What weighs <coughs> more, a ton of sand or a ton of feathers? Get it? <coughs> well, um, it's something to be said so about for shorter trucking too. Essentially, we would yeah. pay. Why don't we roughly look at nine dollars a ton? Yeah, and, I think and get it back at rough. We're going to be selling uh, yards out of a measured truck body and buying back tons. So they're not and scaling it, it uh, on I don't, the way in. I believe they're not scaling it coming in, and then that was supposed to work out in our favor as a yard weighs less than a ton. Um, Does it? A yard of well, a yard, a yard is one point. It's a uh, broke down on a sheet that I yeah. had on my thing last time. It's one point three, yeah, uh, tons per yard. Right. Yeah. That's why I was saying we'd pay about nine dollars a so ton, and we buy back at twelve. It's not really. Six, and one. He's buying at six, but we have to pay two per yard, and we have more than one yard, so we're buying it at like we're getting nine, or buying at twelve. This is why. Uh, Fair enough. That's I, yeah, that aside. would be my suggestion is we wait until we get a proposed agreement yeah. and yeah. review it. Yeah. You guys take a hard look you guys at take it. a look at it. And uh, yeah, I think one of the factors that I think we need to be considered is, is cleaning that pit out and putting that this value to that. Um, this is a nice opportunity to do that. One factor that is a Huge thing is he's he's bringing his excavator over at no cost to the town in this deal to mine all the, the material tracks. out. So that's a huge deal. As far as wear on the water, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Is that everything? The cost that, item off. No other items I need to be here for. Home is a metal if you want it. Um. Yeah, you're welcome to stay as late as you want, Jason. No, I think I'm going to let all you have fun with that. Uh, I'm going to back Okay, oh, you might want to be here for this. Well, no, you don't. Actually, it's fine. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Uh, beautification appointment and resignation. So we have a resignation from the beautification committee. Who's resigning? Blair Watson is resigning. Motion to accept Blair Watson's resignation from the beautification committee. Sending her a thank you card. Second. Okay, and then the beautification voted unanimously to appoint Vanessa Taranjo. Is there like a vacancy that was posted or something? No vacancy posted. So let's post for a vacancy and then ask. It seems like they had somebody picked before there was a posting. Agreed. Totally support that. Everyone else support that too? In accordance with the town's duly adopted policy for making appointments to committees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Duncan. Facebook, front port forum, website. Do you want it in the newspaper? No. Not Twitter. Facebook. Instagram. Yeah. And then there's a Do you have Facebook access? I do. Okay. I changed the password, sorry. <laughs> I would just double check the the adopted policy. I don't think a posting in the News and Citizen is required for that kind of committee, but for some things it is. For, for, for library, planning commission, I think. Library and planning commission. Yeah, I do Those believe. Yeah. Yeah. But just double check. So I'm not sure if this is the right spot, Beth, but because we're under appointments and committees, could I motion to appoint Tom as the form based code administrator? Yeah. Yeah. Second. 
Uh, that, discussion. Is at, that is at this for discussion. That is at the Planning Commission's recommendation. Correct. Yes. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Have it. Send thank you, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's what he was on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 send a condolences, Chair. Yeah, we can uh, send a condolences. Do we really need to reappoint our health officers? Because yes, they're already appointed. The form. Okay, whether we have to do it here or not, I don't know. We at least have to authorize filling out the form. Who do you recommend we authorize? Mm -hmm. You or Tom? Tom. Motion to authorize Tom to fill out the form for health officers that's due by November 1. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Yes. Me too. Guys, have it. This is a junk. The signed version's already in here. We just crossed off two added items, everybody. You know, you guys didn't actually vote on accepting the resignation. Should I just pretend you did? I yeah, think so. We yeah, we okay. did. I'm sure we did. Okay. I, I heard it too. <laughs> From everybody's memory, we did. It's a silent uh, yeah. approval. Okay. okay. Um, was there a second? Yeah, I just voted. I second. Okay. Where are we going again? Uh, health officers really good. Good vacation did. Uh, EDA and Northern Borders Regional Commission Grant Administration. So. Long, very long story. It's a very long story. Short is we can't use LCPC as our administrator because they are not LDDs, which is a local development district. Um, we have some options. One is that we can administer ourselves, not requiring an LDD. Would that be something we'd have? Randall that, yep, that's something we could have Randall do. Uh, who is on Zoom? Don't even forget to look and see if Randall has something to say about all of this. Um, and so is Seth is here and Tasha is on Zoom also. And Tori is on Zoom also. Um, so we have some options. We could administer ourselves. That's one option. Second option is we can ask LEDC to administer. Uh, we could reach out to Pat and see if they wanted to. Option two. Option three is we could work, we could reach out to the Northern Vermont Economic Development District, which is essentially the Northern Franklin County. Um, Northwest Regional Planning. Yeah, Northwest Regional Planning, thank you. Um, and ask them to administer. Another option is we could administer ourselves and work with LCPC where they look at grant funding to help us administer, to help supplement cost. Um, and I think there's also potential options for any one of the folks listed um, as a subcontractor through LCPC. Did I cover all the options? Wait, Randall did it. Wait, okay, oh, Randall, yeah, sorry. One, one well, second, Randall. Call it and put him on no, please wait. So we don't have to do the microphone thing. It's still going to echo. Okay, oh. Randall. Oh, sorry. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, you did cover the options, but there's a little nuance to the term grant administration, which, which is to say that the options that involve uh, LEDC and uh, NVEDD. Uh, it is grant administration, but it's a very uh, rudimentary uh, grant administration. It's essentially a kind of like reviewing documents for completeness sort of administration. It's not. Uh, it's not what I would typically think of as grant administration. It's it's somewhat uh, uh, hands off grant administration. So there's in a way there's almost a third option. There's complete administration in house. There's administration in house with the somewhat uh, oversight of the LDDs, which is, the, which is the part that's mentioned that has the 2% baked in to the NBRC grant. And then there's working with the LDDs and then potentially subcontracting sub out um, more robust grant administration or parting out to some degree parts of robust uh, grant administration uh, through a subcontracting process but essentially the, the the choices are as as you laid out Beth. i don't think it would echo on the phone okay 
did you, I hate to do this, but um, did you reach out to Randall and ask him what his capacity was for? Did, I'll let Randall speak for himself, but yes, I did. Oh. Thank you. Are we in the echo-free zone? Good. Um, yeah, uh, I I know in conversation with Tom as well, you know, we sort of discussed this and, uh, you know, uh, whatever the select board decides, obviously, is what's going to happen. Um, but given that I have never administered a federal grant before, um, you know, in an ultimate comfort zone situation, I certainly would like to have as hands-on help as I can get with someone else if, and or, you know, as it was originally discussed, at least in the conversation with Beth, was like, uh, before we sort of knew further details was like, you know, having someone do the, the grant administration would be ideal, but having it have them do that in a collaborative sort of way so that I can learn from that process and then moving forward, have that experience so that I'm, you know, not coming at this for the first time with this very important project with, again, as will be mentioned later, you know, the integration with EDA, because this is just the NBRC piece. And if we get an EDA, then there's a lot of interfacing between those two things and how they sort of work moving forward together. And, you know, that's going to be, a, you know, a, quite a lift, I think. Uh, I told Tasha she could speak as soon as Rand is done. Sorry, Tim. Can you, let's do it again. Uh, Tasha, if you want to go ahead. Thank, thank, thank you so much. much. Um, hopefully I figured out this system with the, the speaking and not speaking. Um, and I appreciate Randall's concerns. You know, we currently administer a Northern Borders grant and it, and it is a heavy lift. Um, and through some conversations back and forth with Northern Borders today, I'm just wondering if we should all the parties, including um, LADC, uh, the town, and us, just have a meeting with NBRC and understand what they're willing to accept and what they're not, because they seem to have pretty strong guardrails around because we're not an LDD, us not helping you. Um, Pat Ripley contacted me and said, you know, we're willing to be an LDD, but then we'd want to subcontract with you on the administration, and I'm not sure Northern Borders would allow that. So I'm just wondering if we really, if, if, if I'm not sure that, that we have a good understanding about what all the options are that would really work for the town and we just want to be helpful to you. So maybe some further discussions. I think a significant piece that, hey, hold on. Sorry. Go ahead. I think a significant piece that hasn't been said is that LCPC put the grant together for the town and is the most familiar with the project, which is why if they've been so involved in this, who, who's to be established as the LDD? Because right now Tory's the go-to person for MDRC, and so that, that's a factor that I think, how do you work around that, how do you work with that, and how, how, do, you gain, how do you make sure you don't lose that institutional piece? Um, yeah, the other piece to all of this is I'm really, really worried that we have too many people involved right now because I feel like we have too many people involved. So if we have lots of hands in the pot and it's getting confusing in emails with the northern borders folks at the state. So I think that getting everyone in a room and talking through possibilities and also roles and responsibilities right now uh, and then roles and responsibilities longer term after we settle on how we want to approach this is going to be really important uh, so that we don't have so many cooks in the kitchen and i do not want to be a cook <laughs> like if something is a problem i want to know about it but i don't want to have my hands in the middle of it and i do feel like every once in a while i need to jump in and just say like christy we understand the problem like we're talking about it but i don't want to have to do that is kind of how I feel about it. Um, so, where does that leave us? That leaves us like we need to figure out what we're going to do about the administration, and we need to figure it out, figure it out fast. 
because things keep changing. So maybe we can set up that all Lamoille County Johnson people involved jump on a call and really dig into what the possibilities are and whose role is what. Can I offer one thought that Please. might might help narrow the field a little bit? Um, <clears throat> if I had to vote tonight, I I have the greatest respect for Catherine Dimitrick and Northwest Regional Planning Commission. By way of full disclosure, I worked there at one point in time when it was still Franklin Grand Isle Regional Planning Commission. But having said that, I I would prefer to work with LEDC or LCPC rather than NR, uh, NWRPC. Um, so I don't know if that so helps. So it stays to, close to home? So it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's Lamar County. And it, again, I, I don't for a minute think that that Northwest wouldn't do a wonderful job um, and wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be um, well qualified to do it. I just think it makes more sense to try and work with LEDC and LCPC. Um, and I get Randall's um, hesitation um, about doing it, but I do want to build the capacity for him to be able to handle a grant like this because in my mind that's a major reason for hiring him is to be able to get a project like this and run with it. Um, so as long as we can figure out a way to build his capacity and work with LEDC or, and or LCPC and, and BRC um, to accomplish all that. And EDA. Don't I'm all EDA. in. Don't forget EDA. Yeah, yeah. I'm EDA. acronymed out. Yeah. But I think the idea of a meeting is a good one. Um, I just think we might be able to take Catherine out of the picture and you know, narrow the focus a little bit. I think we need to take Catherine out quickly out of this specific discussion and then be really clear with both her and Christy and I always for Chris at um, Northern Borders, Vermont, at Vermont, the state, whatever Chris's title, Sanders. He's Saunders. the federal. He's the Saunders. federal contact, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I think we should just like make sure that everyone who we've been talking to is clear about where we land with those roles um, to really open it up. Randall, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, um. Just the, the one thing that I would add is, you know, there's, again, there's the two intertwined, intertwined questions. Like right now, what we're talking about applies to NBRC, but EDA has a, diff a potentially different set of options because as far as I know, and I think Tasha communicated as much, uh, the EDA piece, should it be successful, is something that LCPC could uh, administer. Um, so that's just another little wrinkle. And could I add to what Randall said? I also, I had uh, sent Duncan an email I got from Northern Borders earlier today where they were talking about meeting with the town to um, re-scope the, the, I mean, or, or talk about the scope and the budget of the NBRC proposal. and. I'm just concerned that rejigging the NBRC grant will accept, uh, affect the EDA application. <clears throat> so I just want to confirm that you want us to continue drafting this EDA application and understand where you are on, on the scope of the project. Um, Tim, can we? Yeah, I'm just going to um, I don't understand why there's an email about rescoping. Like, I don't even know where that came from. Can you enlighten us, Tasha? Um, when I was communicating with them about what role, you know, L, uh, I had communicated that LEDC had asked us to be involved as well. And they said, well, their next step in the process <coughs> was to meet with the town because the project had to be they had to talk about both uh, opening up the scope and the budget. Do you have that email I sent you, Duncan? Or yeah, I showed it to Beth. Whoops, sorry. 
be a lot easier if we could just communicate. I know. <laughs> Maybe we should just talk with Seth because he's in the room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yes, I showed Beth the email. Um, I don't think Tom or Randall have seen it. Um, we, that was going to be our next step was ask Tom or Randall if they knew what the heck she was talking about. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand. So it sounds like we need to <clears throat> follow up and get Christy on our calendars soon. Christy and um, Christy is the prop programs manager from the state, but ultimately the decision is probably going to come from Chris Saunders or uh, the assistant from Andrea. So Chris should be definitely in the room. Thanks. So, so well, you know, while we're here and she's on mute. Um, there was an email that that Tasha received from somebody at NBRC. Christy. Christy. Was it Christy? Um, saying that the town was looking at redeveloping the scope and budget to the project. Anything you know anything about? Yeah, so um, that's the concerning part. And we need to figure this all out it's important because we don't fit like there's time constraints with all of this so well i guess what i was going to say is like as far as the administration i think we're all supportive of the model i, I we, i'm not going to speak for everybody i'm supportive of duncan's model if they're okay with it i think mark's copacetic yes. with it yeah duncan's model meaning if randall's up and lcpc and ledc can handle the grant administration and it makes everybody happy with NRBC or uh, NBRC, sorry. We I'm acronym now. Yeah. We can't F name three people. FEMA. Um, oh, whoops, that's the wrong acronym. But we could I come up with a plan great. that... Well, we're getting into the weeds about topics that yeah. this is not the topic. The administration portion. It all plays into the administration. So, um, yeah, Randall. LCPC, Chris Saunders, or um, maybe Christy, and <coughs> LEDC, and then two or less board members need to coordinate next week or this week. Yeah, so Randall, do you want to take the next step to set up a meeting with everybody sooner rather than later? Um, I do want to make, Christy needs to be there because if she's going to be the one sending email, emails like this, she needs to be hearing the conversation. Uh, and also, I think early next week, we need... Are you around next week? This week? It's so. Monday. This week? Um, yeah, for the most part. Okay. There, there was a Thursday meeting that I committed to for something I already. For something. Yeah, we probably the same thing. Probably don't both need to go. Um, anyway, so that we can get on the same page with the state very specifically for northern borders and also I think that getting everyone in a room with this group with everyone that's talking very soon like next 24 <coughs> hours if possible um, would be wise of us too and when you say room the zoom is a I mean, room. the zoom room, room. <laughs> yeah. I mean a call yeah. yeah so do you mind facilitating both of those Randall uh, um, let me just make sure I understand there was there was an early next week meeting but then what's the meeting within the next 24 hours who are the who are the who are the folks for that okay. um, so not early forget early next week that was those are Tom's words forget Tom <laughs> uh, so next 24 hours, this group getting together and figuring out roles and responsibilities, and at some point this week, sooner rather than later, connecting with the state. So Christy, I don't know who else, look, with the state, Northern Border State people, and a subset of those of us that connect in this next 24 hours, we can figure that out leaving the next 24 hour meeting. Um, to really understand what they're talking about in meeting with the town on rescoping and being very clear about everybody's roles and responsibilities um, following that 24 hour meeting. You sure you don't want to make it 48 hours? I'm sure. Stop procrastinating. I would say as soon as possible because. 24 hours. 
some some people might not be able to make 24. But we could shoot for that as a goal. Certainly. That's a goal. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, does that sound good? Thumbs up, yeah. Yeah. Does that sound good to you too, Tasha? Is that, yeah. Yes, I know. I, I, I have some time tomorrow afternoon. Uh, yeah. okay. and you have Seth there, so you can ask him too. That worked for you too. Okay. Seth says yes to. So Randall, you'll go ahead and set that up, and if you have any trouble like getting commitments, you can text <clears> me. <throat> I might be your problem. <laughs> um, okay. Anything else on this topic? So you guys are supportive. Are you supportive of whatever we figure out running with? Wholeheartedly. Okay. I don't see what other options we have. I don't either. Yeah, I don't think we have a lot. Okay, that sounds good. So we'll follow up with where we land on the grant administration right. discussions. Just give them the farm. Um, okay. We're going to move on to the DEC grant monthly study update. And I think Randall, that might be Randall's. I think Randall's going to take it on at the end of this conversation. Are you? What so, does that mean? You're starting? Um, I got a bill for from Mumley Engineering. Um, Tyler Mumley, and I didn't know what it was, but I do some digging. Thanks, Seth. Appreciate it. Um, turns out uh, Johnson received a a grant, um, a public-private partnership construction um, for stormwater with Vermont Electric Co-op. The amount was five hundred eighty-seven thousand um, through ARPA funds, administered by the state. An ARPA grant through the state, not town. Of the <coughs> um, where these funds have to be encumbered um, and then spent by 2026. That's really as far as I got. Is everything you have here? Is the agreement for engineering services and then the um, email about your project has been awarded? So I think we're co-applicants. Right. Or just a throughput. But I, I don't believe it's administered through mm -hmm. LCPC. That's so, not true. So I think uh, Randall might, I have a grant number. Um, it's actually in the packet, but I can, um, I'll shoot you an email, Randall, of just where we are and what to do, what's the next step. Um, again, this was pre-flood, <coughs> um, January 2022. So we've been through two town administrators and uh, different select board members even. So I think we have to figure out where we are, pick up, and move forward. Did that bill get run through tonight's orders? I believe so, yes. So we've officially signed off on paying the invoice. It's you not our invoice, though. Huh? Is that our invoice? I'm it's our invoice. invoice. It's our invoice because we're the grant recipient, aren't we? Right. Yeah. Um, Wait, say that again, Rosemary. Isn't this a project with the Vermont Electric Co-op? Yes. Yeah. Why are they paying it? I know. I don't think it's our invoice. I because they can't access the funds. That's why it's a co-applicant. That's why it's a co Ah, yeah. Because it's, 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 ARPA, it's ARPA funds in their care. They're not eligible. Vividly. Right. Saying this is a really good deal. They don't even have to pay us for the administration portion of it. And they get okay, so for. how do we get reimbursed for it? That's... That's what I don't know how that works. It's so you just a $64 kind of the question that he needs to work on. I thought Randall's going to work on it. Well, no, uh, Randall's working on the piece about the, okay, okay, uh, about okay. the industrial park. Well, this is... You got away with this. You know, what, was that, what was the total bill? Uh, $1,310. So, essentially, that bill is what sparked. As that came through, I said, oh, the red flag, that's new. And that brought up the research. I reached out to Duncan, I reached out to Seth. So that we're on our own for administration with this. Our, I don't think it's going to be too complicated, hopefully. But um, we have an agreement with um, Mumley, and we have a bill, so we do have to pay it. And I'll figure out what the next steps are. Hopefully, that um, maybe the, maybe I should meet with the Vermont Electric Co-op to see what, where they at to they're at as well. Um, or is this something that the town? They're just agreeing to the use of their property. Well, you've got the email that I sent you with John Varney's well, uh, only... address on it. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. you could reach out to him. Yeah, the only thing that the town gets is like, there's a, already an easement, right? For us to hook into Correct. it because it's overbuilt. Correct. So we we issued the RFP. We the thing is that like I don't contractor. remember getting any of the invoices with the Jenna's Promise being co-applicant. Did we did we move all that money for Jenna's Promise with Johnson being co-applicant? Jenna's Promise paid for up front, and we reimbursed me Jenna's Promise. Yeah, then we got money from the state, uh, right? Yes. But this this is a different grant fund source. Anyway, so the you know the requirements might be different. I don't know that they are or they aren't, but I think that was C D B G. This is ARPA. I have a grant number. I'll call the state uh D C grant. Um and just we'll be able to pull the agreement in what we have agreed to do. You know, believe it or not, I tend to think that this is more in Randall's wheelhouse, but I understand that we just barely approved it in the laptop too. I don't care who does it. I just like to see. I just like to see us get reimbursed for that. Why don't I do the digging and then we can decide who gets to do the work <clears> after? But there's still a lot. Of, we have to do some yeah, background. Yeah, the right? piece that Randall is working on right now, as far as I remember, is he's trying to get from Mumley a commitment on the. Industrial park. The okay. industrial park. It's the uh, pre-engineering, whatever. It's it's directly related to the EDA application. Seth, what's the term of art that I'm looking for? The, for the uh, preliminary engineering. Report. Preliminary engineering report. There's yeah. no acronym for that. P -R Randall's working on that. Yeah. I I don't know that he's unless you've had specific conversations with him about this. I don't think he is aware of the need to follow up on this piece. Yeah. Because he's working on is, is getting a commitment from Mumley to update that preliminary engineering report. And that preliminary engineering report is also for this public private partnership with the Model Electric Co op. Mm, no. 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 There are two separate for, for two separate things. Right. Ground, across the street. This yeah. is from Route That's 15 across the road. South. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Awful lot happened in that area. Three, three so grants. Right. 1.8 million dollars. We're going to pay it. We're going to pay it. We're paying it and then being reimbursed through the Hopefully. ARPA grant fund. I mean, I don't know by if we should. By the electric co op. No. The electric no. co op does not have a single nickel that comes out of their pocket. It all comes out of the towns mm -hmm. and is reimbursed to the town. This, but it uh, ultimately comes out of the ARPA funds, so the five, state five eight, funds. Yeah, the 585. Five everything that's reimbursed. Right. Is going to the co op. Though. We might need to do a strategic meeting. No, because it's not. We have Who's it going to? just shy of 600000 to go out in the stormwater project reimbursed. And then we have EDA, it's going to be three to four hundred thousand, thirty percent 30%. Don't worry, we have a strategic meeting. It's called budgeting. And then, exactly. out, I mean, <laughs> and then we have. 867000 to MBRC, that's going to be reimbursed after we spend $1.6 million. So there's a lot of money going out and like lining those projects up. More broke. Yeah, like, <laughs> let's make sure, you know, like before we start scatter shooting the shotgun, maybe we should have some strategy to this. Strategy? Why would you do that? I, I, um, I, you like balls in the air, Tom. Oh, yeah. got it. The immediate purpose is we've got a bill that needs to be paid. My, yes, I'm yes. wondering whether or not we should oh, even should, yeah. put a hold on that bill until we find out. It's, it's we we have a contract it. with it for it. Like, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, we have two separate contracts. This is the one that went out for an RFP three times? Yeah. Yeah. That's a big After the industrial park RFP was approved, and is okay. it in? You're on the co-op's board too. You should have this one like. The thing that really disturbs me is there's no sides. freaking file or anything on it. I, I, okay, I apologize. I got us off track. Right. Um, it was very valuable. Though. Thank, thank you. But you know, my take on it, Thomas, is. Somebody needs to make the phone call to that contact that you have with ARPA. Find out what the process for getting reimbursed is, how yes. long it's going to take, etc. 
and get us set up or, you know, tell them That's it. that we're going to be getting bills for this, you know. We need, yeah, like we need, to, we need to set up a process. Maybe even renegotiate the agreement to do it in stages. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, can, can we just submit that straight invoice we get? Okay. Yeah. Just have a, we can. You mean you mean the car? No, no, no. Or state. directly to ARPA? I pay them enough. Yeah, well, if if they're willing to do that, I where where I suspect we're a grant recipient, so that's probably not going to work. But we're the grantee. They're the sub grantee. Pull, we'll pull it all. And yeah. Figure it out. Figure it out. So we get reimbursed. Thanks for bringing that one up. That was fun. Yeah. Well, that one was left very much on his doorstep. And I know. It's, it's not your fault. At really all. disappointing that um, there isn't okay. better information about it. Randall, I know we all talked at the same time. Apologies. It's not very nice of us. Um, I don't. You don't what? Talk. At the same time. Okay. Uh, uh. Should we talk about the, since we're talking to Vermont Electric Co-op, should we just confuse it and talk about the right-of-way? No. Yeah, let's do it. 18. What right-of-way? I don't know. What's this right-of-way, co-op right-of-way? Oh, are, you, are you blowing right by 18? Right and 19. Right? And 19? Yeah. I was hoping we were just going to do Holmes Meadow and I could go home. Oh, you want to do Holmes Meadow? Okay. You should have said that to start with. Right? She no, asked I you. I confused. I didn't know it was going to uh, 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 I was asking for a reason. Okay, Holmes Meadow. You got it, Scott. Holmes Meadow. We're on it. Um, Maybe Seth so is here for this, this one, too. So part of this is going to have to be an executive session, and part of it will be an open session. Holmes Meadow? That's, Seth, do you want to speak on your memo, just a back, quick background? And, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So the Holmes Meadow uh, project um, is, um, Holmes Meadow is the property at the end of River Road. Um, we all know it now. River, you all know where it is <laughs> now. Um, so, um, in 2021, um, LCPC helped the town pull together a application to the Flood Resilient Communities Fund um, for a protective buyout uh, of the property. So a protective buyout is a buyout of a vacant property. Um, it's being funded through um, ARPA funds that Vermont Emergency Management received. Um, first phase of the project would be the buyout, um, town acquiring the property. Um, the second phase, which uh, funding is secured for, but the contract won't be given to the town until the property is sold, would be um, an active uh, floodplain restoration on, on the property to increase flood storage um, during, during a major flood. Um, so where the project is now, after some um, fits and starts getting an appraisal. The property has been um, appraised. The uh, will only pay you know, the appraised value. Um, the property owner has signed a voluntary transaction agreement, uh, which allows the project to move forward. Um, and LCPC is working with an attorney on a title search. Um, there's a draft title search. They needed to make some tweaks, like noting that the property would be acquired by the town, not LCPC. Um, and there's some, uh, you know, uh, some other issues that need to be resolved um, related to a mortgage on the property that we're working with the property owner to, to deal with. Um, and the, our attorney is working with uh, the, uh, to, to deal with that as well. Um, but for the project to be able to really move into that phase, the town also has to sign the voluntary transaction agreement. Um, we need to give that with VEM, and then once the title search is all taken care of, it can move for, you know, on toward the, toward the closing. And if the town has um, any contingencies, we could put it in that letter, in that agreement letter? Um, I think it, de um, so the voluntary transaction agreement is kind of, is a, is a standard form, but if there are contingencies, it would be good to know and discuss what those are. Like if there are deductions um, you know, that's the kind of thing that we would want to make sure get handled at the, um, at the closing. So, yeah. yeah. Those deductions occur if there are things that need to happen like that. What would be an example of a deduction? 
So um, I'll just use the, the example um, in the town of Cambridge, the buyout that was done a few years ago, there were some back uh, water bills and back taxes, um, and those were you know, re deducted from the, the amount that was. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think we would handle that at the, the next phase, not at the BTA phase. So this agreement that we're being potentially acting on tonight is that voluntary agreement from the yes. landowner indicating he's accepted a, yes, a sale a, price? Or it's, a, it's essentially saying that he's accepted that sale price and is going to continue moving forward with the, um, with the sale. And will, do, will we get a copy of that? Yeah. You'd have to sign it. You'd have to sign it. Yes. We'd have to sign it. Yeah. We'd have to sign it. Yes. Sign the same copy. Yeah. Okay. So my question is: Is there anything relative? It sounds fairly straightforward to me. Is there anything in this process that we need to go into executive session to discuss? So sale price. I didn't feel comfortable. I was as far as like real estate transactions. If you're fine talking about that in public session, that's fine. I just wanted to give you the option. Have that conversation. Pretty sure we are owed back to taxes. I would like that to come out somewhere. And this is it, right? Yeah. So just because so, it has the negotiations for value. Well, once we sign it. Or Evan can just board them out. The, this session. is just yeah. the purchasing of the property phase, right? This is not mitigation. This isn't phase. an actual negotiation. This is a agreement to take the next step. This is the agreement to take well, the next step. So you still you need to do the closing, and the, and the closing documents could include deductions for back taxes if that's an issue. Yeah. And there, there will also be a phase. This is just the purchase. Once the property is purchased, there's also funding for engineering and design. That's and what I wanted to know about. Because there was like conceptual designs in 2021. Yes, there's a there's a conceptual design, but it's like a you know big cut, and it's not enough to act on. We the like the contract. big cut. Right. I like the big cut. Yeah. Bigger. Yeah. Right, Scott. Yeah, I mean this sort of will help. It'll help the town out immensely because if people are filling cellars, that voids that, you know, unfortunately, yeah. they're taking flood water, and any kind of fill that's brought in for any kind of project it will be offset. Yeah. By that. And we actually own a piece of property across the river from that, the old mobile home park. So the part where the, where the skate park is, we, uh, we also own the other side of the road all the way down to the river. Yeah. That's another area that mm -hmm. could potentially be yeah. cut down and opened up to receive Take initial flood waters. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Just get rid of all the things. We don't need any of it. I like it. If we made it a snowmaking pond for a resort, we could get away with murder. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't mind talking about this in open. Yeah. Like, at this right. point. I haven't given anything away before. Do you have any concerns with it? I, it's it's this you know the standard form that's used for this kind of for a, a buyout or a voluntary buyout. Yeah, so yeah, I understand, but the like you, the, I don't think I don't see a concern with talking about. Is there price. anything in that form that you could think of that would be that the should price remain itself? Like, would we want to go to negotiate the price at, a, at all? Where did the price come from? The, so that's a great question. The price is based on a professional appraisal fair market of appraisal. fair market value. So. Um, BM would not pay more than that. Um, if you wanted to, there's no match. So I guess you could negotiate, try to negotiate for less, but you wouldn't, that would just reduce the grant award. It wouldn't, it wouldn't change anything on our side. Investment. 
Do we even I feel know like what the price there's is? No, I, like, I don't even feel like we have it's a... It's on that form. I mean, honestly, yeah, I have the price. public knowledge. We haven't really discussed it. That's what I mean. And the thing is, like, we don't actually have... There's not negotiating power, because negotiating down only means a landowner it's receives less. less. So, like, I don't even think there's any point in not... It's not this public. It'll be public anyway. Yeah, it's not town taxpayer dollars. It's just the working class taxpayer and dollars. And it's nothing like, and we're not in a position to negotiate anything at the moment, honestly. <laughs> nothing. We just want to back up. So I'm just gonna tell you um, the. So thank you for keeping this as a potential executive session. I think that was appropriate, but given all the discussion, the fair market value is listed at one hundred and five thousand dollars. Any concerns about signing it to get us to the next step? Our, our back due taxes will be backed out the next stage. Next stage, so uh, motion to authorize the chair to sign thingy. Second. Uh, any discussion? Does it require just an authorized signature from the town, or does signature everybody have to sign? Signature of community agent. Does not specify anything other than a town of Johnson authorized agent. Uh, could, be, could be Tom. I don't care. Yeah. Amend it to Tom. Would, I think you amend, amend it. It's a friendly amendment, Tom. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's friendly to me as All well. All right. Beautiful. Okay. You guys are so friendly. We're <laughs> signing together. We're friendly um, people. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone want to see it? No, it definitely it. looks like paper. Yes, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I just say call. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Guys, have it. Is there an idea how long that would take to start reducing that elevation? Um, so ten to twenty years. <laughs> I'm, you know, uh, <laughs> ruling that <laughs> <that'd laughs> <that'd laughs> going here, as, you know, very very soon. Um, then there'd be some design work that would need to happen in this, this spring. Um, I would hope we could get the actual implementation happening either in um, fall of uh, 24 or Actually, right. building season. Yeah, so not too far away. Yeah, not too far away. Okay. Well, I don't want to drag this out. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, like, yeah. Uh, uh, it's our initial. I like it. I forget who all was there. Um, Eric Oz mm -hmm. asked me to join in on that one a couple of years ago, and a lot of that was um, Bryce Jam. Yes, it has wow. a so so real potential. Yeah, please. Falls, right? oh, Everything. Yeah, it came out of the 2019 flood, <laughs> like the the yeah. like, need or whatever. Yes. COVID's yeah. just a comedian funding source. That's uh, well. Yeah. Okay. Is this another one where we have to spend money and get reimbursed? Town's checkbook's gonna look red really soon. I know. Or um, is that in the parentheses? Yeah. It's a bad number. That's better. We just talked about. Okay. So that, that's it for uh, Are we going we backwards just make now? Sure. Hold on, please hold. Unless you can advocate for like ten feet out of that thing instead of five. We have oh, all those it's things. Super, yes, it's the last item. Exactly. That con conceptual number is about three feet and five feet. Yeah. So it's the last one. One area, and this is not related to anything with the town of Johnson, but coming through Cambridge over the Romwich Longway Bridge on our side, there's a homeowner who has leveled their. They water. built it up. The water now pond is over 15. Yeah, so it does. Sailing through there after a heavy rain, you might go skittering off the road. Yeah. Then you can find that fire hydrant that's still low. <laughs> it's convenient, right? Yeah. Where are we going back Thank to? Man, I sure. Okay, now, okay, yeah. <laughs> Item 12. I'm just going to keep you on your toes. I was listening to a podcast about how you have to have novel experiences in order to make Thank your. You. Nice guy. Thank you. Make it feel like you've lived a longer life. So I'm just. I, I, I figure I, I've lived long <laughs> enough. <laughs> My life's been long enough tonight. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, co-op. Uh, the Vermont Electric Co-op Town 
20. <laughs> right of way occupancy request. What is this? Are you going are you gonna get back to 18 at some point? Well, okay. What do you mean? On Swamp Road, the Electro uh, Off wants to extend power. They already did the work. Uh, Why are we they, even they talking about French right under the road? Because they just. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Uh, so, do we screen. want to approve it? Jason no. emailed me and said this needs to get signed. No. Okay. Oh, Jason said it was. Did they to get a permit evidence. to begin with to do the work, or did they get a permit after the fact? I don't know. It's dated June twenty third. Um, June twenty third. I don't. They have paid for some permits, but I don't know if it's for that one. Yeah. Well, we're supposed to get a, a deposit of a thousand bucks for the crossing. Is it a thousand or five hundred? I mean, I would think. Which we hold for a year. Or it could be. They just done it. No, I think this the policy's changed now. It's not much different. Whatever. Than Oregon building a garage and right away. Charge. Not giving a shit. Really? It's a lot different, actually. Wait, what? What did I miss? Oh, it was about roads. Mark was distracted. Did he collect a, a damage deposit for the installation of the? It's a wire under the road. This is the, clearly uh, requires an email from Jason Whitehill. Uh, this is for a tower crossing that was done on Swamp Road. I have seen it at different stages being completed, and it was all done to our specs. They filled out right away permit. This one is for BDC. It was a very brief email. So the homeowner probably filled it out. Is that your take on it? So the that? permit was filled out and it was inspected the whole way. Correct. Um, why don't we? Why don't I look into it and then we'll just take it up at the next meeting. If the work's already done, it's not going to slow the work down. Are we going to even like? Why are we talking about this at the next meeting? All right. Let's well, the last time this came up, there was not a permit filed and there was no inspection done. Okay. So what do we do in those cases? That one was a little bit touchier because it was asphalt, but we asked them to do a compaction test, right? And if it failed, to rip it right out and replace the whole thing. Okay, well, you want to and if it didn't this? fail, to not sign the permit, but not make them dig it back out. Okay. This is dirt, so. So do you care? Dirt's very important to some people, Beth. Well, I went by, by way of full disclosure, when they were working on it, and they had a... A track excavator with a pecker on it, pecking ledge. Well, that's handy. So they definitely had some issues with getting it deep enough. I have no idea whether they actually got it deep enough or not, because I didn't hang around it. You're worried about running equipment on. around it and everything, right? Is this a road permit or a utility permit? Utility. It's a Road right of way occupancy request. Yeah, it's an underground rather than an overhead, so mm -hmm. it should be a right of way permit. Um, that's not the town of Johnson right of way permit. It would be a town of Johnson right of way permit. Swamp road. It says um, the Mount Electric Co op, your petitioners, respectfully represents that in order to furnish adequate service to its members, it is necessary to locate poles, wires, Guys within the road wide, uh, right of way of Swamp uh, Swamp Road in the town of Johnson, Vermont, as shown in the attached uh, spec. VEC further represents that work, such work should be done in a manner safe for public travel and safe and subject to the rules thereof. Also, it's not desirable to make such locations otherwise than shown on the attached. We request permission from the Town of Johnson Select Board to place, construct, reconstruct, operate, repair, maintain, improve, mark, blah, 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 all of the stuff they need to put in the ground through the road, road right of way. All right, do you want to just approve it, Beth? What do you mean, do I just want to approve it? What does that even mean? Like, are we getting I don't know. What do you want to do about it? Like, what? Get clarification, bring it up next meeting. I don't know if it, like, what are we going to do anyways? Yeah, I don't understand the point of. Well, if, well, if we didn't approve, if we didn't this one approve the permit, both days, we wouldn't be responsible for a damn thing. Right away permit. 
And one of, Jason one of the says they filled out a right of way permit. And then, you know. So what are they asking for? So did did as part of that did presumably if he had collected a damage deposit, you would have received mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Can you can you ask Jason? Can you just follow up with Jason and say, does the board need to act on this? Did we get a deposit? And did they get the permit before they did the work? And if the answers to all of those things are sufficient, then we're not we even don't ever want to hear deal about it again. Yeah, no. And if it's not sufficient, then bring it back to us. Love it. And so that that what yeah. we're looking for, we just could ignore it and not sign it. Beautiful. Or you can sign it. Like oh, that it's too. a select it's a select board, I see. Yeah. I see your point. Well, we can do it next week. Yeah, can you just find out all those things? What do you think? Interlocal agreement for the oh, town assessor. We're almost there. Uh, actually, the Carrie's on the line. Can we just do Halloween? We'll let Carrie go. Yeah. Halloween. I had a power lot of these people. Now you want to introduce it? Yeah, so um, Carrie is um, hosting a... Which which one item are we on? Yeah, a little Halloween. Halloween. Which Watch number is that? Yet. Last page. Last okay. item. 23. Okay. 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 So um, Carrie's sponsoring Halloween. Initially it was going to be at the college. It's a haunted house, four day event. Um, and it's being moved to the market, um, which is, I think, pretty cool. And she's asking because it's a fundraiser um, and just in town, if the town could sponsor the event so that uh, the town's insurance could be used as a, for the event um, to support it, uh, support the event following. Um, I reached out to the League of Cities and Towns, and um, in my previous role, uh, the town sponsored lots of events. Um, it was very, very often. However, it was always on public property or within the right of way. This is the first time I ran into um, a private, private property, town sponsoring an event on private property or property not owned by the town, and. Um, there is a mechanism at the LCT um, that was in the packet, the email, and so we we would have to provide the LCT, the, the address, the date of the event, um, the name of the property owner, and their mailing address, and um, they just want to outline the town's responsibility for the property use um, during that sponsored event. And there is. Um, a facility use agreement that VLCT would like to be used out, and they have um, a model of a contract for that facility use agreement. That's a lot of research. Basically, they're asking for, in this case, Pomerlo, right? Pomerlo to break and us right. to have an agreement. Yes. I think what they're asking for is the town to take on all liability for their event. Event liability. That was my take, too. Would it cost us anything to add this onto the policy for a I three do, days? Uh, my understanding is no. So they're going to have a haunted house inside Stowe and Rockland? It's creepy, huh? The place, the place with all the sharp metal and you know, flood waters and everything. So would... That's not risky. There's four days that are listed on this email. Are we sponsoring all four days and covering insurance for all four days? or I believe it would cover setup, cleanup in the four days of events. Yes. So it would be like ten days. Wait, so we would name the Pomelo real estate as an additional insured? Um, I doubt they let us. So that was my email to the OCD. The response is, um, and 
we have well no they want have assistance to it. It to be with um that's why they're additionally to provide assistance for crowd control parking etc um to assist with the, the town sponsoring the the private property but you guys have to agree to sponsor it i think there's too much risk in it for me to be happy with it just being honest Kids could be having Bobby for apples and drought. It's and not that, that they would help with it. They're, they're saying that if you need guidance on crowd control, so that's just telling us what to do. <clears throat> I'd really personally like a lot more notice than having to deal with it at a board meeting. <laughs> with no advance notice or no knowledge of what was really going on in, in the future. Um. Well, there wasn't a ton of notice for the last two events. I know. Well, I said the same thing then, too. Seems like you're repeating yourself. <laughs> I don't know if that's an H thing. I could be. Yeah. Could be. But, you know, this is a surprise, and I just, I don't like surprises. Can you guys hear me? <clears throat> Can you guys hear me on this meeting or no? Uh, no. To, uh, talk on they can't hear anything. Um, okay, Tim. Cool. Tim is on it. Is your name really Tim? I've been calling you Tom, and I'm sorry for that. You told your names, Tim. Yeah, but I'm terrible with names. Like, what's your name? If he wants to be Tom, I'll be Tim. It's up to him now. You guys can't switch on me now. Rosemary, do I keep you? There's your Halloween. <laughs> okay, uh, Tim again. I'll turn it back on in a second. If you want to take us off mute. Carrie, if you want to speak. Discussion for the past year about as far as not having a lot of head time about it. We were talking about this last April. Um, then we lost two venues due to the flood. We were gonna be in the temple, which is now the library. We went to the college, which is now being sold. Um, Palmer, whatever his name is, Ernie, said he would donate it as a community event space, which is perfect. We're doing the event. We would just love that in the public's eye, it's going to be viewed as a town of Johnson event. It'd be great if it's under your umbrella that you kind of already have. Ernie's is looking for a release of liability. We're not gonna sue the town. And if you guys don't want to umbrella us, then we'll just do private insurance. I don't know if you have more questions than that. Carrie, just so you know, if you speak again, we can't hear you. I need to take, like, we have to figure out audio. Um, you can stay off me, that's fine. We just aren't going to hear you. And I can see you're talking again, and we can't hear you. Uh, the, we missed the very beginning of what you said, but I heard you say we started in April. You started looking and doing the work in April. Um, so from there on out, didn't hear. Uh, before that, I didn't hear you. Um, thoughts on what Carrie said? Well, they may have started planning in April, but this is the first time we've heard about it. No, <clears throat> it's not, Duncan. Right, wrong, or otherwise. I'm just saying. Uh, that yeah, when the when the duck there. race was there, I remember an individual in the crowd saying that they're interested in four events per year. That's right, Evan. Use uh, your memory. Good job. That they were talking about doing a fall into winter pumpkin thing. So a fall into winter? No. It's 
it's a lot higher on the liability so in my mind than what I had pictured. Yeah. So she also spoke about having different venues lined up. Regardless, the question isn't that. The question is, what do we want to do or not? <laughs> There's no sharp metal. The thing is insurance liability. Like, do we want to take the liability on or don't we? And and it's not about like for me, it's not about whether organizers would sue. It's about if somebody gets hurt. Right. Then they are suing. It's not uh, uh, the people in the community I, I are volunteering. I understand that. So I'm asking you, are you concerned? Uh, I'm a little less um, strict than I normally would be about liability concerns. Usually I'm like, no liability. I like the idea of having a community event that the town is involved in and isn't sticklers about personally, given the community in its current maybe, state. Maybe we could do a pumpkin chunk in at Old Mill Park. I could get behind that. Talk about liability. No liability needed. Yeah, yeah. no liability there. <laughs> I know, right? You don't only lose a head or a hand or some limb. I, 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 For the purpose of trying to move things on, I'm going to make a motion to approve the For the purpose of trying to move things on, I'm going to make a motion to authorize VLCT, authorize this as a, as a covered event, as a town event, and to have VLCT issue a sort of insurance for Ernie, if that's what's needed. I'll second that motion. Okay, discussion? I think we've already had it. Um, the only discussion is that I would just like to follow up with Ernie on that we're not liable to any damage to his property and we should have an agreement to that effect. So um, any damage to his property. We do have one more meeting before the event next Monday. Right. Yeah, but I don't want to, we, we talk about doing budget stuff next meeting. Oh, yeah. I don't want and to budget have, takes us like six meetings. Budget's going to be terrible. It's hard. I don't want to do, I don't want to add things. No, so. they have to like, anyway. try to teach me to add. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Aye. Aye is have it. Okay. Thanks, Carrie. Um, Assessor. Give Mark two candy bars. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fried me for my own <laughs> So the reason the, uh, the interlocal agreement assessor thing is on the agenda is probably due to me. Um, at our last meeting, I believe, maybe it was a couple of meetings ago, we actually signed a revised interlocal contract to add St. George. Correct. So my thought was, and we can do any of this that anybody thinks we need to in executive session under personnel, but I personally don't think we need to. My ask would be that we authorize Beth to sign or send out an, a revised offer of employment letter, which I think she emailed to everybody. Um, I don't know if everybody got a chance to read it. I did not. So basically, it's the same in a local, it's the same offer of employment letter that we had before, but it basically adds St. George into the mix. Okay. So moved. Yes. What are you looking at? Does that have nothing to Did you get that, Donna? Benefits, correct? Send out a revised offer of letter. This, this does not. Okay. This, this one just gets them to 20 hours a week. Got it. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Second. What was the motion? The motion was to authorize you oh, to yeah. send the offer of employment. Uh, any discussion? Everyone understands what, what it's about? Yes. Totally. All those in favor? Aye. aye. And now we don't need that executive session. Did you say session. aye? I said aye. We don't need that executive session. Was there something else we needed the executive session for? Or? Well, the other one yeah. was the property. No, it's the spreadsheets. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, um, we like it that way. We went to 24 hours. And oh. Okay, so next up is the health 
benefit updates. It's gone down in price. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you so, say something? Um, I Every time. <laughs> village meeting tonight. Uh, the village is considering an opt out or cash in lieu of benefits policy. Um, their decision will affect the village only employees um, and it may affect the shared employees. I'm still unfamiliar with the relationship of who receives town benefits versus village. Um, it's uh, really clear. <laughs> so I know why you haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> it's a super I, blurry line. I put no to, all I know is some people are 640, 820. <laughs> well, no, no, no. All employees, correct me if I'm wrong, Rosemary, you're not an employee. You're an elected official, but... Mm -hmm. All employees are solely paid for by their entity. There is reimbursement from the other entity. Oh. But we have one employee, and that is Lydia. The, we don't have one employee. We have Tom, Lydia, Randall. Well, <laughs> you're yeah, pretty obvious. Yeah, Randall's the pretty obvious. Through. The highway's pretty obvious, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one ever explained that to me. Thanks. So we pay 100% of Lydia's time. The, re the village reimburses us for 40% of her time. And then we pay the village a reimbursement of 20% of Marla's time because she is a village employee. Excellent. Right. Rosemary right. is an elected official and you have Susan as an employee, right? And you're both paid for by the town and the village reimburses no, for 40%. No, paid by the town and Susan's paid by the village. Gotcha. But there's 40% that goes to the village. Of, and then 40% that comes back from the village for Rosemary's. Cool. I get Super it. blurry. I really appreciate that. I got a spreadsheet <laughs> yeah. for you if you It'll want it. I love spreadsheets. He probably does. It's just like an Excel. Excel file. So, uh, <clears throat> but with that, um, but I don't. Um, I mean, are you gonna interrupt? You're gonna keep interrupting. I am because he wants Donna. To the meeting yeah, did you come from the village that. meeting? Yeah, yeah. Was, was the there? Meeting. Was they did not make a decision. They think that they need to make the decision along with you guys. Okay. Oh. And, and I, Ken called oh. me during our meeting earlier after their meeting, which oh. was. He didn't. He hours. didn't call you about that, but he uh, called you about something else. They did propose the third and the eighth of November for a joint meeting. Oh my god! What? So meeting doubt. I can't I, even spend a lot. Of I was acronymed out earlier, but I'm really coming back into it. <laughs> <laughs> But, oh, yeah. it's so great. The cast dumped a huge snake. Do we need to go into executive session? <laughs> <laughs> That's why um, you asked me what I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't go home. <laughs> so do we, um, we can handle that via email, right? The 3rd or the 8th of November yeah. are their proposed dates for a potential meeting. And um, the one thing I wanted to ask you about is I spoke with, um, the LCT. How do you know that? Oh, because Donna just said it. Oh. No, Donna didn't say the third or the eighth. Yeah, how do you know? He got an email. Ken texted me. He's, ta he's tapped into your texting. Oh, yeah. But um, the LCT no longer offers benefit consulting or discuss that that's something that they no longer do. Um, instead, they use Terry Arnow of. Um, Hickok, Boardman, HR Intelligence. I don't think we need this, right? We can solve this problem on our own. But I just want to let you know that there's, uh, if we can't figure this out, there's help out there. But I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to nail this down pretty quick. I think we can figure it out. The help, yep. the help will send us a bill. Yes, that's what we want to avoid. Um, but it, for every. Are you working tomorrow? Yeah. What are you, okay, what are, where, are we, where are we going? So what do we need? That's the only... We don't need to do anything on this. Just an update. Yeah. Okay. I think some of it might have been contingent on... Anything else. And the village has an No, no. Wait, no, there's more to this. So what are our, our benefit options right now? So we're, right now it's 90% of a two-person... It's a, what's called a defined benefit. So you agree to pay X dollar amount, and then the employee is able to use that dollar amount that's defined um, towards anything on the help, uh, the help connect 
network. And so... Anything that we, like, we don't offer all of the plans in the health tax. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We just it's offer just the dollar amount. We didn't it's offer a, straight, a high deductible. Straight dollar amount. No, they could There's opt in. But uh, you could opt you could oh, they could opt in. So you agree to pay, um, the defined benefit agrees to pay, in this case, 90% of Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Gold. Gold plan. Yeah, Gold plan. And so whether you're a single, two-person family, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And if you want to take that dollar amount and use a high deductible plan, and you oh. can receive cash in lieu of benefits, is that correct, for the difference? You actually have to do straight yeah, cash. It. It's payroll. Right. But it's tax, correct? It's tax. Yes. yes, yes. The other option is you do what's called, I forget the name of it, but it's not a defined benefit, it's the other one, where you just say, okay, we're, we're offering, this is our offering, and it's equal to everybody, where you say, okay, we're going to offer you this plan, 100% uh, premium, 50% of your out-of-pocket covered by an HSA or an HRA, and that and the remaining portion will pay 30% after the HRA is used up. And so that way, it's, everybody is on the same plan and the same offering. Can I interrupt for a second? Yeah. You're, you're talking about... Way too many details. What, what to propose. We're not there yet. Why yeah. are we even talking about it now? I don't know. I just want to make sure that we're covering the things that we need to cover for our decisions with the joint meeting. That's what I. Care. I really liked when Carl had discussed about what Barry, he works for the town, not the city, right? Yeah, Barry town. Town plan, what yeah. Barry Town did. And he, but he was talking about a high deductible with an HRA. Yeah. H. Well, it was HSA. It was not. It was HRA. It, it was because the town yeah. got the money back after. Funded. But it was fully funded. It was fully with an funded. HRA. Yes. Right. So there's actually less money coming out of the employees' pockets. Right. Same coverage. And and, and if there wasn't a lot of doctors' visits, it ended up costing the municipality less. If there wasn't, it was yes. it was the same. Yep. If there was a lot of doctors' visits, it would cost the municipality the same. And then exactly. I yeah. think those are all great ideas, but why are we talking about them now? Let's put them together on a spreadsheet with costs and then talk about it at the joint meeting or send it out before the joint meeting. Or we can talk about it at budget meetings or. Well, we have open well, we enrollment coming right around the right right corner. Choices. So, just for the little bit of background, Tom. But do you think we're going to get to a point where we decide on what to do tonight? No. No, 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 no. I just want to make sure that we're at a point that like we have everything laid out in front of us and we know the next time we meet. Like, we can make a decision. I'd, I'd very much like and encourage Tom to develop a plan and put something in front of us that we can react to. Yeah. So the background. I just don't think we should do that. I, no, that's fine. Yep. I don't Open think there's much value talking about it. November 1st through January 15th. So as long as we put it in the budget, there's a high probability we'll have that change in before the 15th. Um, but it, it wouldn't take effect until, I, I, I don't know, we'd have to talk to that meeting historically is just to set rates of compensation for Rosemary and Susan. And you need your decision about healthcare. And we need to make a decision yeah, well, about healthcare, right? So <laughs> since I've been on the board and before then, the agreement was that whatever the town and village did jointly for Susan and Rosemary, they would do for their same employees. There's no hostility. Oh, in yeah. the office. They're now, the village crew is under union contract and the town crew is under union contract, so the only employee that this affects is Jason in the highway department. All of the benefits are already defined for the rest of them. But it also affects... Have you seen the contract? For the highway? Yeah. Uh, I'll send it to you. Those negotiations. Yeah, they're not even a year in. We have U T Randall, um, the library, Jean, Lydia. Oh, apparently we have employees at the skate park too that I never know about. Well, the library just the, the library employees are the responsibility of the library trustees. They just honor what we do, right? Yeah, but the thing is, like. It's not that we're just affecting one person. 
they were just affecting one person, we would build our benefits around that person. Right. Right. Yeah. I guess I think we're trying to say the same thing, but differently. Okay. Yeah. We'll Taking it away. Thing. Got it. Are we done? We have exactly session. Oh, uh, no, we don't. Or do we? We, do. Uh, we have attorney client Justin communications. Houston contract. We have, we don't have the real estate negotiation. And we have. Was that the attorney client communications? Yeah, what is it? Do we that still was, have uh, the attorney client? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that needed? Go ahead. Thank you, Seth. Is that needed? Yeah, thank you, Seth. Um, do you know where that stands? Mm -hmm. The co-applicant, the EDA grant. Yeah, we need to have that conversation. Yes, and that's, we do. That has attorney-client communication. EDA, yes, it does. Okay. Um, okay, so. I'll motion then that we enter into executive session as allowed by one BSA 313A1F. I don't know if I've ever used F. It would be really useful, by the way, for your report F. to have that specific language. It says F. If we have to go uh, into executive. It doesn't seem. Oh, it's in there? Yeah. Okay. It is. No, it's not F, though. It's not right. It's A1, I think. Yeah, A1F. Oh, F? There's an F? I think there's A, B, C, D. Well, there's A1. And then there's contractors, labor, blah, 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 blah confidential. It's A1. So is that one of the two-part motions where we have to acknowledge that no, premature true. disclosure would oh, yeah, disadvantage the town and therefore yes, it go into an executive one. session? Is that? It's true. Yeah. Because premature disclosure would place the town at a substantial disadvantage. disadvantage. Yeah. Okay, that we have a motion. motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you say aye? I said aye. Okay. And I seconded. Uh, okay, we're in executive session at 10.08. Mm -hmm.